What a Monday. And as we always start out, Big Sills! What a great sports weekend. Masters, watch a ton of that. We're 10 days out to the National Football League draft. Um, Amazing. Amazing time of the year. Let's see what people are stirring up here. By the way, welcome in. Dan, I thought the Eagles would never, never pay $25 million for two receivers. You're not. Yet. You're not. Yet. You're not. Yet. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Here we go. I'll put this statement out there, and I'll continue to say this about the Philadelphia Eagles. They're the best contract and cap management team in the league. I don't believe that there's a better football team in the NFL that does a better job with contract structuring, making new templates on how to pay people, and also the cap management. It's pretty incredible. And I do believe they're the best in the National Football League at doing that. Okay? I mean, just listen to the deal in this template. Huge news, obviously, today by the birds. And a great structure on a new contract for wide receiver Devontae Smith. And on top of that, they maneuvered in the fifth-year option, which is kind of unprecedented. And how you combine the two. Most organizations I've never seen. It's one or the one or the other. And they have manipulated his salary so that this is a team-friendly contract for the organization and for him. And by the way, it also speaks loudly to some of what you guys have been saying. That um, does he want to play in Philly? This is clearly getting ahead of the market. And that answer is yes. He likes being a Philadelphia Eagle. Or you don't take that deal. I can't think his agent was particularly happy about signing this prior to these other guys like Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb and Jefferson getting out there. Now, I'll make the comment to you. We haven't seen the nuts and bolts of what the cap hits are, but I have to imagine that there's a ton of the money up front and the way that it's been structured, it's pretty insane. And here's how it reads. He's not making $25 million this year. He's making 6.4. So when you say they got two $25 million wide receivers, you're talking about the life of the option and the extension that doesn't kick in for three years. Okay. So he's not being paid that 6.4 million. In 2024, and in 25, the fifth-year option is 15-5. Think about what you're doing here. These next two years, you're basically getting a guy under market value that if he was to go out in the open market would be a $25 million a year guy. So the first two years is great. And then from 26 to 28, that's when the three years – 75 million and the guaranteed of 51 million kick in. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that 51 million starts getting appropriated this year. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think the 51 million kicks in in 26, the guarantees. I think they could spread that out over the next five years. So they may be starting that this year. We have to wait and see how the nuts and bolts look at this. So over five years, it's $96.9 million at an annual salary of nineteen four. Totally a brilliant contract by the general manager and his team. 
when it comes to putting this together here. Have to wait and see what the cap hits are, but really, anytime that they have put contracts together, the Eagles, the one thing that has been also part of what makes that and Howie and his people really great at what they do when it comes to contracts and cap management is really that cap. So at the end of the day, Devontae wanted to be an Eagle. The Eagles wanted him, and they really did do a good job. You got to give it to the agent and Devontae for agreeing to this. I would put, put it out there that he's probably left on the market at least $20 million. But that $20 million to him is peace of mind. So to me, again, and here's where, if I'm not mistaken, it puts him in this category. Um, Tyree Kill makes $30 million. Devontae Adams, 28. Cooper Cup, 26-7. AJ, 25. And now you have, with the total overlook of the contract, 25, you have Devontae and Metcalf makes $24 million. So at the end of the day, it's well constructed. And it's not a shocker because this is what he does and this is who he is. His librarians did a great job. The accountants were hitting on all cylinders with this contract. That's a great deal. There, there's really nothing that you can look at. Now, you've got to look at the overall part of the team. Does this make you better? No, it makes you the same. You haven't done anything but lock up a player that you covet and want on the team. You're not better than you were a year ago. The problem that you have is you've extended guys that are currently on your team on the offensive side of the football outside of Josh Sweat, and you still haven't addressed the other side of the football. It's clear the Philadelphia Eagles are looking at one thing here, one side of the ball, and they think they're going to win on that side of the ball. And they're not going to really put too much emphasis in the defensive side, even though that was a critical collapse last year. They haven't addressed the collapse in any way, shape, or form. Maybe with Gardner Johnson. Other than that, they haven't. You're going to have to rely, and you now officially, what is it? You've got $96 million tied up in three players. Okay. Okay. A lot of pressure. More pressure. Personally, you don't win now. I'm firing Jalen Hurts at the end of the 2024 season. And I'm getting someone in here that can take that talent to a Super Bowl win. If he doesn't turn his career around, I'm firing him. And I think you should expect that. There's no development now. You know, the only unsure thing in that entire huddle now is Jalen Hurts. It is. AJ's a great player. Devontae's a great player. Malata's a great player. Dickerson's a great player. Lane's a great player. A lot of you like Saquon. The only guy that's not is him. Great players play great every year and every game. So, here's, here's, here's our problem. One side of the ball, you believe that Vic Fangio is Merlin the Magician with the trash cans that you've given him. And on the other hand, you have Kellen Moore, who for the first time has more talent around him than any time in his career. What problem would you rather deal with? Or maybe better yet, what's the bigger, who has the bigger task? Getting the football in all those hands? We're trying to figure out what you have on defense because you still don't know what you have on defense. 
One thing else about this Devontae thing that I have to go back and, and say, this is why this is a really great contract and a great day for the Eagles and for Devontae Smith. You're reinvesting in a draft pick that is hit, and it's a first rounder. And this is the equity that you get with him still being on a rookie contract at $6.4 million. You see the equity of the deal? You get the next two years with the option and the rookie contract, and you extended him, and you reinvested in a draft pick that you developed. That's a grand slam. That's a grand slam. Okay? It's a grand slam. There's, 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 there's no question. Okay? No question. That's a grand sl- look at look at look at the extensions that you did. You extended Malata, developed them, drafted them in the seventh round. Grand slam. Landon Dickerson's a second round pick. You made him the highest paid guard in the National Football League. You developed them, you restructured them. It's fantastic. Okay? You now have taken, you did the same thing basically to Josh Sweat. You drafted him, fourth round, developed him, and you reworked this contract. Those are the type of deals that are phenomenal for organizations. The Band-Aid signings like Devin White and some of these other bums, that's the stuff that kills you. And if you have too many of those, no matter what you do with Devontae Smith, at the end of the day, are you better? The Eagles aren't better today. It gives them a chance to be better for a longer period of time with Devontae and signing players like that, but you're no better than you were at the last game of the season. You've got the same personnel. You're still not better. And it, listen, signing a player like Devontae and giving him a contract extension and picking up the option, he he was just as accountable, along with A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts, for the collapse as anybody else in that huddle. They all collapsed. Are you better? I don't know. I mean, are you better? Where would you think you're better? Because you gave a guy more money? And he was involved in that complete collapse as well? You, that's right. You signed your good players. Ultra, you signed your good players. Because that's an indictment on how well you've done by developing and signing your own guys. When you start signing other people's guys, that's when you fall in trouble. That's when you get in trouble. Is when you start signing other people's guys. Okay, last week, this guy said there's no way to pay Devontae. Now what do you say? Well, they came up with a way on using, they're not paying him for three more years. And not a chance in hell A.J. Brown will be on this team in 26. Zero. They gave themselves leeway. I stand... Still buy it. He's making six point four million this year. Next year he makes fifteen five. Then in twenty six, he gets bumped up to twenty five. Quite frankly, they're not paying twenty five million dollars for both guys. Nice try, kid. Go back to the um, computer and call me back when you get here. They're not paying two guys twenty five million dollars this year. Not near, they're not doing that for three years. Three years they're not doing that. Three years. About the time you end up getting that Hassan Reddick pick that you made with the Jets. Sills, what are you honestly going to say if Hertz has an excellent season? Marcus, 
congratulations for doing your job. My God Almighty, how much more do you want in your huddle? It's pretty fail-safe right now, don't you think? I'll make a proclamation now. A.J. Brown ain't on this team in 26. No way. No way. You know why? They'll run him out of town the same way they ran Reddick out of town. They'll just move the money over to Bryce Huff. Okay? They'll just move him. We haven't invested in our drafted D players in 12 years outside of Cox. Correct, Anthony. That's the problem. Anthony, get this. You're still, you're not better today because you gave Devontae his money. You're not better. Where are you better? You had the same wide receivers a year ago. And you still had a nuclear meltdown. I mean, you're not better. You're not. Eagles at least try hard to be negative at this moment. Prince, I think I've been very to the point on how great the contract was structured. This is what that guy does. He blows that loud when it comes to drafting, especially defensive players. That's not going to change. You're not better on defense. You have not upgraded anywhere. Anywhere. I mean, nowhere have you upgraded. Now, again, it's exciting that you've extended a player that you've had for the last three years. This is not an addition. He's not playing corner for you. Howie will be aggressive in the draft and trades. Also taking note of next year's free agent class. Slay and Bradbury will be off the books. Smart financial moves. Um, Inferno. Okay, well, what about this year's defense? Dan, Dan Cilium, name another player of the Eagles. Always, I'm, I'm, Dan Seal, name, name another player the Eagles have to pay in the future with the exception of Jalen Carter. Um, Nobody. They don't have to pay anybody on that defense. There's nobody that's retainable. And Jordan Davis hasn't earned a second contract yet. Think about that. The only player on that defense that you have that's worth a second contract is Jalen Carter. You're not thinking of extending anybody on defense because you don't have talent there. You, you don't have talent. You, you don't. Got a $50 million quarterback and two $25 million wide receivers. In the next four years, do you think this football team wins a Super Bowl not addressing your defense, but only solely addressing your offense? Yes or no? You think that's a Super Bowl team right now? Is that a Super Bowl team? That's right. Here's, here's Xander. Super Bowl or bust. Get the word, Jalen. Do you believe that's a Super Bowl team having not addressed the defense? You haven't addressed it. Look at... So... This guy thinks giving Devontae his money. Where was Devontae last year? Hey, man, where was Devontae last year in the last seven games? Where was AJ? Still, so stop gripping about everything you're losing. You're losing credibility. You're losing your credibility by not seeing the full picture. You know what that is? You didn't get better today. Signing. Your players, you want to hear this? Signing your players? Well, congratulations. That's what's called being a GM. Drafting good players, signing your good players, and giving them extensions. You want to give a guy a pat on the back 
for not fucking it up like he did with Jalen Rager. Okay. Congratulations for doing your job. You're making it sound like this is some epiphany or something. It is for him because you want to know why? It's the first contract that that guy has signed, Yale, for a wide receiver since he's been in charge of the draft. He should be throwing rainbows and butterflies because every other guy he's drafted has failed. Nobody has said anything negative about the contract. I'm asking you, get this, me asking you a question, do you think in the next four years with the complete roster that you have, what's the difference from the, what was the last, what was, Xander, what was the last day of the regular season for the Eagles last year? What was the, what was, what was it? Like December something or January, a little bit after January? Are you better right now than you were after the Giant game? It'll be upgraded with what? Cast-offs again? Eagles have brought in plenty of defensive free agents before. Hardgrave, Slay, Reddick, currently locking up the offense before the defense is the priority. Dude, the defense should have been the number one priority. I didn't know you had issues on offense. Look again, Landon Dickerson, making him the highest paid guard. Fabulous. Restructuring Mulata. Great. This is what I said to you again. They're the best contract and cap management team in the league. They're the worst at drafting defensive football players. They're the worst. You have one thing that they do, two things, actually, that they do exceptionally well. And, quite frankly, the evaluation of the quarterback position is sketchy at best. Sketchy. You signed one guy who was a complete failure in the end, and you got another guy who's had three bumpy rides. Well, two bumpy rides in one good year. I speak reality. This is what it is. Okay. Sills wrong again? Why? You're not paying him 25 million for 3 years. Okay? You're still not paying the guy. And by the way, 3 years, not a chance AJ Brown's on the team. I'll stick to that. One more time, you will not have two 25 million dollar wide receivers on your football team. As of today, you don't. You will. Maybe. Maybe. You don't have two $25 million wideouts right now for three years. Am I wrong? Am I reading this wrong? The structure of the contract, 6.4 this year, 15.5 the fifth-year option at 25, and that thing at 26 kicks in. That's three years from now. You don't have two $25 million guys. As much as you want to think you do, you don't. See that? It's not Jalen's contract, senor. This is Devontae's contract. 6.4, 15.5. And then 26 to 28 is when he gets the $75 million three-year extension. So quite frankly, this year he makes less than $7 million. So you can have both your guys. Last week you said Devontae would be traded. No, I said, should you trade him? And would you trade him? Yeah, I did say that. Again, LJ, we'll see how your, uh, your, your uh, hamburger head, A.J. Brown, deals with this too not being the top dog in the building. I can't wait to see that dynamic. I think that guy's going to have a meltdown. Nuclear. You keep saying Jalen Hurts is a $50 million. He is a $50 million. Um, four years, 255 is $50 million a year. 
You're talking about the cap hits. I'm talking about the owner out of his pocket paying a guy $50 million, and he's not a $50 million quarterback. Now, once again, let's get back to the reality question. Are you better today? How you doing, Q? Thanks for um, the super chat. Are you better today than you were as soon as the Buccaneer game was over? Are you better? This draft will say a lot about how the Eagles feel about A.J. Brown. You can see them grabbing a receiver in the second round and try to deal him next year. Oh, he it's either going to be next year or the year after. He won't be on that team at 26, A.J. Brown. They're not paying $25 million for two guys. Right now they're not. And they have the affordability of not having to. Because, like I said, the one thing they do, two things they do great. Uh, contracts and cap management. Best in the league at what they do with that. Clearly. Okay. How many pe- are they better now? Where are you better? Where are you better right now on defense? Where are you better? Hey, Sales, let's see you put a team together. I'll put money that you'll suck as a general manager. Well, what I would do again is I would build my football team like the Eagles and the Niners do. When I have lesser talented quarterbacks, you have to put a ton of people around them. And when I have more experience and really highly gifted athletic quarterbacks, I don't. Nobody in Kansas City is doing this shit. Extending wide receivers and nobody's doing that in places that have le- uh, legitimate quarterbacks. No, Nobody's doing that. You're the only ones. Along with San Francisco. It's funny. That's why you guys have lost the last two because you don't have top flight quarterbacks. If you have a tough flight quarterback, tough flight quarterbacks don't need two $25 million wideouts. By the way, isn't Devontae, isn't he, I don't know, T. Higgins? Last three years, Yale, tell me this, Yale. Last three years, here's the numbers. Would we not agree that uh, Higgins is a number two, right? He's a number two and Cincy. Well, T. Higgins, 4.4 receptions for 63.5 a game. And Smitty, 4.8 catches a game at 63.6. They're the same guy. Okay. So you signed T. Higgins who I happen to think is a really good player. They have the same numbers. Over the last three years, they got the same numbers. Same numbers. And actually, Higgins has a better quarterback. Signing Smitty doesn't make the defense better. We get it. Way to point out the obvious and challenge people to say different. No, what you have to have a conversation on is that what they did today was something that you don't get pats on the back for. Now, I'll tell you what you do get pats on the back for is the manipulating of the fifth year option. I've never seen that. I've never seen you combine the fifth year option and the extension. Because you know why? Traditionally, traditionally, um, agents and players don't want both. It tells you a lot about Devontae Smith that he wants to be here and he wants to be an Eagle. I think it tells you a lot about the player. Okay? That's right, you know. Howie Roseman did exactly what he was supposed to do. This is not an epiphany or something. Signing your own players. You don't get pats on the back for that. But what you do get pats on the back for is the structuring of the contracts, which once again, they're the best in the league 
at contracts and cap manipulation. They do a spectacular job at that. Okay? Paul, uh, Dano, Smitty's contract doesn't begin in 26. He'll play under the fifth-year option, so there's no big jump for two seasons. Correct, Paul. There's no 225. There's not two $25 million wide receivers on this ball club yet. And there never will be. Okay? And there never will be. Um, Sills, it is hard to comprehend that Smitty gave up millions to stay in Philly. He did, though. I know we joked about how the complex is rated, but maybe that stuff is just as important as other factors. Also, too, Bob, I think that Howie getting him right after the Rager disaster, that people now, thank you, Nello. I appreciate you coming aboard. Um, I think that also plays into it. You'd like to finish where you started. I do believe that that played into it. And I think he's a loyal guy. When you don't draft well, you have to be great at the cap to be competent to sign outside free agents. Correct. Ultra. And that's always a gamble signing someone, someone else's players or someone else's mistakes. Okay. 50 million is a life changing money, intimate, wire, hey, immediate wire transfer. Hey, yeah, I don't know uh, that 51 guaranteed. I think it's probably prorated out over the five years. That's what I'm assuming. I, we have to wait and see how they're going to spread this out. Sills, so, I don't think competent coaches, which we don't have, could have any significance on their performance. Well, again, um, you know, you, you signed Devontae Smith. You're not better today. It's, a, it's, a, it's something you're supposed to do. This is part of being a GM as well. Like, you know, again, this is not to rain on anybody's parade. It's a reward for a player that they got right. Okay. What am I missing? Congratulations. You didn't F the draft pickup? Okay. Why are you making it sound like this is some sort of like massive historic thing when it's not? You sign a player, you drafted him, you developed him. I'm missing it. This is what your job is. This is what your do job description is. Again, what makes this crazy great is how they put that fifth year option and the player agreed to the extension. Before. Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson or C.D. Lamb signed the contract. That's both parties working hand in hand with one another and wanting to get the yes. You see, the Eagles didn't want to get the yes with Reddick, obviously. They didn't want to get the yes. It gave you something else to talk about for a second besides the usual no defense, Jalen Hurt. Uh, Jay Quest, I don't think Jalen Hurts is off the hook at all. I think he's more on the hook. If <laughs> this guy sucks again, I, I I saw a guy actually on social media say, well, really only eight of those INTs were, dude, shut up. He sucked. Now you have no excuses to suck. None. Zero. There's no failure here. You have no margin for failure. None. You will get nothing. And it will be even more of a ton of bricks falling down on you if you fail this year. Because nobody in the league has that kind of huddle, especially when it comes to money. Nobody. He has the richest offensive personnel in the league. Better win, kid. No excuses. Not even Carson Wentz had that. Supposedly, he wanted to be an eagle for life. If anything, he helped us out more than anything. He surely did, Furman. Okay, he surely did. He wanted to win and be compensated well enough. Can I tell you what it reminds me of? Tell me if you guys, yeah, tell me if you guys go down to this. 
I personally look at this deal and how uh, Devontae Smith signed this contract and how he worked this contract. It reminds me of what Cooper Cup did in Los Angeles. Cup could have got after that season, historic year. And, you know, after that historic year, he could have went on the open market and he could have got $35 million. $30 million. He would have been higher paid than what Tyreek Hill was. But he liked being around. Sean McVay, he liked the Ram organization and Kevin Demoff and in less need. He liked being around that. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to take the market value. I'm going to take the comfort value. I'm comfortable being here. How much is it worth peace of mind? And he put a number on it. The Rams came to a number and the Rams cut a deal with Cooper Cup. To me, I completely think that's exactly what Devontae did. What is it and what's the number for me for peace of mind? Okay, what's the number for peace of mind? They came to an agreement. They all signed off on it. And it's more important for him to have everything. How many, look at Justin Jefferson's situation. Okay, look at this. Look at, look at. How about this, Yale? Check this out. Look look at what the position Justin Jefferson's in. Do you take the bag of money in Minnesota, or do you take peace of mind and go somewhere else and sign a contract so that it gives you a chance to win? You're not going to win in Minnesota. You're just not going to win. You don't even know who your quarterback is. And we're talking April. No ego. Let's just win the damn chip culture. Um, Furman, I I, I got to tell you that that culture, the last part of that, it wobbles for me. The culture. Prince is right. We need a def- We need defense to do that. You don't have a defense. You're not better today. What you did do was, personally, I don't know how teams don't take that template that the Philadelphia Eagles put out there. And I don't know how teams aren't using it on their quarterback. And I don't know how they're not using that Devontae Smith with rookie contracts. Putting, I didn't know you could put the fifth-year option into an extension. You pick the option up and you put the extension on the back end of it. I've never seen that. It, it's, it's, well, I mean, actually spectacular. Christian, Big Seals, you're 100% correct. They gave Jalen all the ammunition, top-notch ammunition to win. If this offense can't beat you by the air, they must beat you by the ground or vice versa. No excuses. There is no excuses. There's zero excuses. This is a Super Bowl or – and personally, I don't believe it's a Super Bowl team because I don't think you're good enough on defense. Now, here's what could happen. It's a great no it, it is it's a great it's a great business move. Here here's what I would say. Now, if you run the ball and you get those 14 play drives back and you keep the time of possession on your side, you may be able to control the game with your offense. You can't shit the bed like you did last year down the stretch. We have upgraded the coaching staff. You you don't know you've upgraded the coaching staff so far but Without the defense, but what about the defense, Howie? Prince, you know, let me let me take that back, Prince. You have upgraded it with more knowledge and more experience. You have. That's not fair. Even though I think that look, look, look at here. We're gonna go, we're gonna talk about both sides of the ball here now. What challenges both coordinators have. Okay. That's correct, right? Anthony is put Anthony's up there. This will be a seven-win team if that happens. Correct. If Jalen Hurts throws the ball 40 times, you're nine and eight at tops. Tops. Again, that contract doesn't add wins. A top-flight linebacker or a corner, he adds. Hey, watch this. Signing... Devontae Smith 
or or trading for Patrick Sertain, what would have given you more wins? The trading of Patrick Sertain. Not the contract extension. Again, I think they're two different things. Is the contract design and template great? No, it's spectacular. Does it help you win? I don't know because last year you struggled to win. Does it secure a position for the future? Yes, it does. Important. Totally important. Totally. Does it make your quarterback better? Well, you're signing the same pieces around him. You're hoping. Seals, at this point, how much do you think Justin Simmons would help our D immensely? Because right now, Jordan Davis is not cutting it. He, he's just not cutting it. Actually, if you were to really think about it, he hasn't lived up to his draft pick. Okay, he has not. People about to go nuts when Howie drafts offensive tackle at 22. Hey, Corey, if they draft an offensive football player at 22, you won seven games this year. I don't believe they're going to do that now. I think they're going edge there. Or trading down. Or trading down to get more draft picks. And I, get this, and then taking alignment in the second round? Yeah. Why hasn't Howie signed him? Vic may be down on him. Um, Justin Simmons? Probably. And they don't want to sign an old guy because it's old guy, more money. Yeah, I, I like the kid Jared Verse too, but I don't believe he's going to be down there that deep. Um, trade up, find a way to get verse. Um, again, I like chop sills. Would you package? What would you package be for certain? Um, a one and a two or a two. How many twos do they have? They got two twos. I might give you two and a four. I'm predicting the Eagles package 22 overall and go get Sertain or a player like him. Yeah. I think he's still got that ability. And plus, get this. Devontae Smith's contract doesn't cost you anything for three years. You know, all the excitement about the contract – the exciting thing is it doesn't cost you anything for three years. That is what you're talking about. Sills, how much of an overpay is that Devontae deal? I think it's underpay. I think it's a steal for the Eagles. Overpay? Um, do I think he's a one? Do I think he's Devontae Adams or DK Metcalf? I don't. However, you put him in a position with a Joe Burrow, he'll put one numbers up, like C.D. Lamb will. Okay? Uh, to me, it all to, to me, Devontae, it depends on the quarterback. And remember something. If you had a guy who could throw the ball for 4,500 yards, both those receivers would be in the 1,500 catch radius. But they're not. Both of them. One of them is. Because they get all the massive targets. I mean, Lamb would never have those numbers in an Eagle offense because they spread the ball more so than they do in Dallas. He's CD Lamb sills. I'd rather have Devontae than Lamb, to be quite honest. Remember something, he's getting those numbers as a two. So I think Devontae Smith is better than CD Lamb. I think Lamb's a good player, but I think he's better. I go power over speed at DE. Now teams getting the ball out too quickly. True. That's a true statement. Uh, negates the speed advantage. 
It, it does. It's Seals, if the Broncos asked for AJ straight up for Sertan, would you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Sertan's on a fifth year option. The Broncos did that. Okay. Um, I don't know if it would be. Yeah, well, he's 26, so he ain't that old. When, if you did something like that, you're, the Eagles would go from, right, think seven win defense. I think you'd go to 13 wins. You had Patrick Sertan and an edge rusher, and you draft a linebacker in the second. You'll be a 13 win team. You're, you're a corner linebacker and edge away. From a 13 win team. Right now, you're seven to 10 in a one round football team. It's not because you don't have massive talent on offense, it's because you have no talent on defense. Okay? Think about that, Yale. Yale, you put Sertain, draft an edge rusher, and get a linebacker. Like that kid, Edron Cooper, or you get the kid, Wilson, NC State, even, even Colson from Michigan. Uh, Ty goes like this, we're a 12-win team now. What'd that get you? You were an 11-win team last year, and you got the shit kicked out of you by the Bucks. You got to have a playoff football team, and you don't. You had 11 wins last year, and you were not a playoff team. You didn't play like one. You, you've got to make plays in the second. You've got to make plays in the postseason. You made no plays. You couldn't even score nine points, actually. Better coaching? You, you hear that? Better coaching. And nothing on the shit play from the quarterback, right? Give me a break, guy. So what am I paying the guy for? Sit around there, take orders from a bozo. Is that what you're saying? You have no leadership at that quarterback position if you're listening to somebody leading you down a down a well that there's no water in. Why in the world would I do that? Why? Because you suck, I should suck. You should man up and be a leader. I'm not doing that. We're doing something else. Act like a leader instead of a follower. All you're doing is following your transactions to your bank account. Hey, my coach sucks, so I will. Congratulations to you, kid. Way to go, Ty. So if you suck, I suck, right? Is that how that works? Why don't you try acting like a fucking leader, guy? He, he okay. How many people think that guy was worth 50 million bucks last year, especially the last part of the season? He looked like a $5 guy. That guy couldn't play in the UFL the last seven. Talk to me like that. That's right. Baker Mayfield. Hey, Ty, Baker Mayfield, not only I'll play him in that game, he I'll play him all year. If Hertz isn't the quarterback, what should we do in 25? It's a, hey, Khalid, think about this. If he bombs, which I'm thinking he is, you got a ready made football team. And you can attract anybody in there. Every quarterback in the National Football League would want to play in Philly with that high-powered talent you have in offense. Okay? Hey, Sam, you're, you're probably right about putting too many expectations on a young um, linebacker to come in and make an impact. Well, that's what they're counting on. They're counting on Vic Fangio and rookies and free agents on defense. Offense, done a nice job at signing your guys. Welcome to being a GM. Again, what's made this exceptional is the template they put together for both the quarterback and the receiver. It is really great. Okay? I would trade a 22nd pick for Patrick Sertain. Sign Justin Simmons and draft an edge rusher. 
Prince, here's the problem. You see, Denver doesn't have a quarterback either. And where are they picking? Okay, Denver's at 12. Here's what I would do if I were Denver. I would trade Patrick Sertain to the Eagles for their 22nd. I would take the 22nd pick, and I would take the 12th pick, and I would move up to New England spot at number three because they need a quarterback. Or AJ, and you're hoping you get a quarterback at 12th. Sean Payton, it doesn't have three years to turn that Denver Bronco thing. He's making $22 million a year. They gave up first-round picks for both Wilson and him. Okay? So Denver gets Denver could potentially move up to two. If you gave Washington, think about this. If you gave Washington the 12th pick and the 22nd pick in the first round to move up to two, you might have to do maybe one more, a later pick in the fourth. You get Jaden Daniels, who I know Sean loves. Okay? They need a court. You're not going to win. Here, here's what Ty says. What's the point of having – okay, Ty. What's the point of having Patrick Sertain on your football team when you can't score any points? What's the point? And then when his fifth-year option is up next year, you're going to pay a guy $25 million when you haven't figured out the quarterback position? Are you trying to get next year's number one overall pick? To get Shador Sanders because Shador Sanders plays in Colorado? And he's the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos? Hell of a PR move. Hell of a PR move. Okay. Get to beat we get to be next to your dad. Okay, so you're gonna take Bo Nix at 12? Why? He's a bust. Do you know why Bo Nix looks so good in college? He was four years older than everyone. Do you want to you want to hear this? I think Bo Nix is the same age as Jalen Hurts. Aren't they both 24, 25? Shit, man. Oh, what's his name? Who's the quarter? C.J. Stroud's younger. C.J. Stroud is younger. I think even Trevor Lawrence is younger. Prime says only Philly and a couple other teams. Shador Sanders is not going to play in Philly because... I don't think the Eagles are going to suck that bad. Um, let's see. Penix. Days I like them, days I don't. Okay? Drop down in the draft, get more picks for 25, get Sanders quarterback. Dad comes with him as the new head coach. The last two years, we drafted dudes who can sit and learn. We need someone who will play day one. Bet it verse. Chop, Latou, Wiggins. From what I understand, I think, isn't Latou in town? Today. This kid we take has to play. And, and Anthony has to be an impact. Travis Hunter's the best player in the in the draft next year. The best player in the draft. Best player in the draft. He'd be the best player in this draft. He, he's, he's exceptional. That's exce He's exceptional. One of the best pure athletes I've seen since Deion Sanders, Rod Woodson, like those kind of guys. And also, he's a savant like Ed Reed. 
he's 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 all of those guys. He's like Ed Reed and Dion. Athleticism off the charts. Can't believe, and I'm happy he did start his career at an HBCU school. I loved those those schools and the history of those schools. He was supposed to be earmarked for Florida State, but Norvell got the job over Dion. And that's why he went to HBCU. Plus, they got him a $2 million deal with all the nil stuff. And that's how he ended up at Jacksonville State. He's exceptional. Exceptional talent. One of the very few guys that you go like this. I don't believe that there'll be a player in the draft next year that will supersede his skills, his skill set. He'll be the number one player taken. There's, there's just no – unless he gets injured – there's just not a chance he's not the number one overall selection. He'd go right now. He he's you know you have somebody special when they can go like in the um next two drafts and they'd be the number one overall selection. I thought Will Anderson was that kind of player too. Turned out to be right. He was the defensive rookie of the year. I said, that's a game changer. It's the best player Saban's ever coached defensively. Is that guy. Anderson is gonna be. A special, like Cornelius Biscuit kind of guy, eight-time Pro Bowler, uh, numerous All-Pro teams, uh, put his hand in the dirt, stand up. Will Anderson's a special player. I think Carter's going to be special too. I do. Okay. Sales, do you think Dion would be a good NFL head coach? You know, it's sometimes those guys that are those spectacular players and people, you've got to have patience. And those guys don't really have – the only guy I ever thought really did a really great job at it was Larry Bird when he was with the Pacers, you know? You don't really see any great quarterbacks as – name me the greatest coach that was a quarterback that was one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Can you? Let's see. Unitas never was a coach. Um, Bradshaw was never a coach. Montana was never a coach. Elway was never a coach. Um, Aikman was never a coach. Brady will never coach. I mean, those are the greatest players. Favre will never coach. Those are the greatest players at quarterback that we've ever had in this league. And not one of them ever, ever elevated to being a head coach. Why? Because I don't think they can have the patience for it. Peyton Manning won't coach. He wants to get into ownership. Travis Hunter is spectacular. Well, very few times do you look at a guy and go, holy shit. I think Dion likes coaching young men, helping them become adults. Dealing with NFL dudes is way different. Yeah, because they get paid. And, and, and quite frankly, they're harder to coach. You know why? Once a veteran guy is set in his ways, why do you think the veteran guys on the football team don't want a new head coach? Because they don't want to have to reprove themselves and their equity in the locker room with a new coach. Nobody likes to have a new guy rolling in there on them because you never know where you stand. That's why when you had Parcells, you had Parcell guys. And he always hired Parcell guys. Okay, because communicating. If Hertz fails this year, he's done. Absolutely. There's no, hey, here's something you have to realize with Jalen Hurts. The pressure now, um, the pressure now for Hurts is this. You have no leeway. You have no excuses on shitty coaches. And get this, you're all putting this on. You think Kellen Moore is an upgrade. You believe that all the extensions and work that they've done on offense has been spectacular, okay? Now there's, you've given him no off-ramp. I would make the point to you, he's got more pressure than once ever had. If this guy fails, and get this, it could go either way. Why? Look at his career. Look at his career. Talk about what he's done and who he is. Individually first, not as a unit. How has he done? Let's do this here. 
I'd like to hear Xander first here. Xander, what letter grade over the three years would you give Jalen Hurts as a starting quarterback for the Eagles? Says a B. B, C plus, B. Eh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. B. Two thousand twenty one C, two thousand twenty two A. 2023 C plus. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I look at that. He was very common in 21, A in 22, and um, C plus to C in 23 with all the turnovers. Love you, Sales, but Lamb is far better than Devontae. How do you know that? Devontae's never been in a number one role ever. Outside of his rookie year, maybe. How do you know that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we've never seen Devontae in a number one role yet. Sills, Washington needs a quarterback too. 12 and 22 won't work. I'll send 22 and pick it two years left on rookie deal. Four or 10 and the 79th and third round pick it will compete for the number. So you're going to send them pick it. Can he pick it to Sean Payton? I don't think that's going to rattle the front office enough. Kenny Pickett and draft picks. 12 and 22 won't work. I'll send 22 and Pickett. That's not going to work for me. They would get 12 and 22, though, and Pickett. I don't know, man. That's not going to cut it for him. I think he wants to draft his own guy. He doesn't want to. Pickett would be on his third team. Um. And two years, I don't think that's working for me. Okay? Denver has nobody right now at the quarterback position. You've got a corner that the Eagles and the 49ers made a call in November. It's well documented that the Denver Broncos were entertaining phone calls in November. So when someone goes like this, they're not trading them. Hurts three-year starter, three playoffs. So what? I can name you a bunch of guys that have done that. I mean, Tua's done that. I mean, Mark Sanchez did that. Okay? Hey, Will. They'll never, ever be anyone with me as long as I do this or I'm done. You think I'm going to have somebody like you drag my ass down? Haven't for 35 years? Never happened. Never happened. I don't do partner radio or partner broadcasting. It don't work for me. Only one guy did it with that I liked. His name was Rod Brooks. It was called Ebony and Ivory. Too far ahead of everyone's time in San Francisco. It was too racial. They couldn't handle it. Okay? Way too far ahead of its time. Okay? Hey, Will, I got you, brother. <laughs> Maniac, what's up? Now, wait a minute. Kevin, Sills and Angelo. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Sills and Angelo. Sills and Seth. Hey, man. 
I'll take that too. I'm with that. I like that too. Sills, this is our problem. We have two cornerbacks who are already getting paid big bucks and underperforming at three interceptions with guys who are com combined making $28 million. I just feel like the Eagles aren't willing to trade and sit guys who are getting paid too much. What do you think? Because they don't have any options back there yet. You're not deep a corner. I know you guys like Keely Ringo and these guys. They're not ready. They're not ready to cover wide receivers in this league. Dude, the wide receiver position, I'll say this to you. The wide receiver position, why do you think it's gotten better? Okay? Why do you think the wide receiver position has gotten better? What do you think? Why do you think the wide receiver position's gotten better? Rule changes? A lot to do with it. Okay? These guys don't get hit. They don't get hit anymore. Boy, if I could play a position in the NFL where I don't get hit as much as I used to and make more money, that's a position you covet. That's a position you want to be part of. That's why there's no running backs making big money anymore. What's up, big guy? I'm here, like Arnold. <laughs> hey, Swaggy goes, I'm here. In all actuality, I wouldn't be bringing you down. I'd be eleva oh, elevating your ass. Thank you. Okay. How about Big Sills and a Howie show? Nah. You know what? Hey, I, I I couldn't have a guy sit on my lap for four hours. <laughs> I, hey, I couldn't have a guy sit on my lap like a ventriloquist. I couldn't. I mean, you know, that's kind of what Nick is. Nick sits there and like the doll is Howie. And like, you know, Nick's supposed to be the you know, ventriloquist, but it's really the doll talking. <laughs> Oh, man. Are you an Eagles fan? No, I'm a fan of the Eagle fans. I tell people all the time. Fan of the Eagles? I'm not a fan of anybody, dog. I, 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 love, I love football. I'm a fan of football. Okay? Seals Denver can still try and trade up. Pickett gives them options. I just don't think that guy is going to shake Sean Payton's um, I don't think that's going to shake his draft tree. I just don't think that's good enough. I don't. Okay. Still trolls because he's miserable with no wife or kids. Oh, oh. <laughs> miserable. No, I'm happy when they're not here. <laughs> Better not say that too loud. Sills, the rumors are Broncos are desperate for picks, including trading certain. I know this. I know this. I got to think this is happening uh, draft day on Thursday. Okay. Patrick Sertain, in my opinion, is getting traded. Okay. He's getting traded. To who? What if he lands in San Francisco? Good night. Okay. Good night. Big Seals, who do you see the Broncos drafting? As of right now, I got Brock Bowers there. At 12. I got I got him at 12. Why would you take Bo Nix or Michael Penix when they're the lesser? And nobody at Bledsoe had those guys in the 15 to 20 range. Think about that. 15 to 20 as best players in the in the uh, draft. And you're going to draft a quarterback who, if he was just put on skill set, would be a fourth rounder. Not doing that. What are Patrick trading, uh, Sertan's trading options? Well, 
Maxon, here's why it's convenient to trade for him. They picked up his fifth year option next year. He's still on a rookie deal. So he's basically on the same thing right now that Devontae Smith's on 6.4 this year, 15.5 next year. Then you're going to have to pay him to keep him. But it'll, here's, here's the beautiful thing he'll only be 26 when you extend him. Why not cut the same deal? Pay him 25, same way. I want to see the Devontae Smith cap hits when all the nuts and bolts get released. But okay, so Bowers gets past the Jets. Yeah, um, Jets need an offensive tackle, man. I think they take that kid Joe Alt from Notre Dame. As of right now, I'll do another mock draft next week. Ten days out from the draft. Um, the draft is Thursday, next Thursday. I was in hospital and painkillers after surgery. Okay. Sorry to hear that, brother. We have a lot of corners already. No, you don't. You don't have any corners. You think you have you have bodies, you mean. You don't really have corners. Let me ask you something here. When you say that, hey, Jeff DeBone, you have $28 million tied up in two corners who had three picks last year. Did you get your money's worth? I got Fuaga going to Tennessee at 11. Um, Alt will be the first non-quarterback drafted. No, he won't. Malik Neighbors and... Marvin Harrison will be the first non-quarterbacks drafted. You're going to go receiver to get him on those rookie contracts. I wouldn't be surprised if Arizona at four has to be getting a lot of calls to try to get up. If I – and got to remember, the Chargers are sitting there at number five. The Chargers just lost both receivers. They want to get on a rookie contract too. So they're going to take the kid neighbors. I think the kid neighbors is better than Harrison Jr. Shit, the kid from Washington might be better than them all. He might be, they might be better than them all. Um, let's see here. Cooper DeJean would be the Eagles' new slot corner. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Swaggy says, what do you think Smith is better than – I do think that – I do. I, I and, and 304 doesn't agree with me. Important question, what's the cap after the deal? We don't know that yet. We've got to see the nuts and bolts. Wait and see the, uh, the cap hits, but the structure and the template is spectacular. Okay? So did you hear J.J. McCarthy had dinner with the Patriots? If you think about it, the New England Patriots got right with one quarterback in the entire franchise's history. Not even Tony Eason was a great player. They get to a Super Bowl. But think of all the shitty quarterbacks that they've had. Steve Grogan. Uh, Jim Plunkett stunk there, too. I mean, they've had one. One quarterback that changed the franchise's look. That's an organization that never gets that position right. And they fell into Brady in the sixth round. I mean, I'm going to sit here and believe the Patriots are going to draft a quarterback that's going to be successful. Okay. You've had one in 55 years. Drew Bretzel was all right. He was. Drew was good. You're right. I, I'm, I, I think highly of Drew. I think he was better than Tony Romo. I think Bledsoe was better than, than Romo. If we still have a lot after Sertain, if we still have a lot after Sertain to Philly, I think that's got to make sense, man. That would change your fortunes. That would change. I think Garoppolo was good, but he only played four games there, five games. 
I don't really think he had any lengthy time quarterbacking in um, New England, did he? What was his record there? Three and one? Something like that? That's nothing really to write a career about, is it? Right? I mean, Brissett, I think, had three starts. I don't know. I mean, that's not a lot to even start a chapter when it comes to your story. Brian Thomas could be down in the 20s. I don't think he's going to be up in the teens. Receiver from LSU. Big Sills. Who do you think the Eagles take first round also? Does Smith sign open the door for Florida State wide receiver Johnny Wilson? I've been listening, and I think um, my stake Sirianni. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Frank, maybe second round with one of those second rounders. If they draft their wide receiver in the second round with one of those twos, A.J. Brown will not be on this team after next year. No way. No way. It's the beginning of the end. I don't believe he'll be on this team. As of right now, once again, the template of the deal is spectacular. And I'll say it again to you. You don't have two $25 million wideouts as of now. You got one guy making 6.4. Okay, so it's a nice sign. You're reinvesting in your guy. You're doing your job. How many pats on the back? Again, the pat on the back is the template of the deal with the fifth-year option. I've never seen that. I, or I've missed that. I've met, or or I've missed that because I I think Devonte Smith had to okay that. Has that ever been done? Why take a flyer on anyone in the in round one? Package twenty-two and gets retained. Absolutely. Absolutely. Damon, thank you. Sills, if the Eagles get their defense right, the league is in trouble. Yes. Yes. Here, Damon, if that football team, which I don't think, and I'm talking the defense, ends up 12th, you'll win the Super Bowl. You'll win the Super Bowl. But I don't believe that. I, I just don't. If they draft Bowers at 22, would it be dumb? No, he's the best player in the draft. I can't pass on the – If hey, if Jalen Carter had fallen to 22 and you don't draft him, that's a dumb move. Even if I had two defensive tackles that I'm happy with, I'm not, not drafting the best player in the draft. If he falls to if the best player, if the bet if the best player falls to me in the draft, I'm not just gonna walk go, oh well, I'll sign the fourth best edge rusher. You know what I'm saying? Why would I do that? Well, hey, I passed on Bowers, the best player in the draft to sign the fourth best OT. Come on, man. That's not common sense and well thought out. You get the best guy, you take the best guy. Denny, still, Sertain helps, but we need to improve pass rush and up. Well, a great corner. Denny, a great corner helps your pass rush immensely. He helps your pass rush. We need defense. Forget Bowers. I, I know that. Now, what you do, if Bowers is still on the board and you're sitting there at 22. Um, do you make a trade for a team that took a player you like that's higher up in the draft? And do you get, by the way, I got to say this to you. I took a, I I've been watching Dallas Turner and I got to say this to you, man. And I listened to what coach wants that said. And I, and I called him. So you think if you have a tight end on him, he struggles, he goes, yep. He, he's not physical. He has got to be in space for him to be successful. He goes, that kid from UCLA, the kid verse, um, those guys are good-looking edge rushers and good-looking players. He goes, that Dallas Turner kid, he goes, if you put a tight end or a back on him, he struggles. 
This is in college, which means he can't play strong side and you run at him. I'm not drafting that. Okay? If you're great in space, he's Nolan Smith. That's what I think Nolan Smith is. Nolan Smith has to be in space. He can't be on a tight end. Like, you got to put him in a wide nine or something. Let him rush. If you put him on a tight end or such, personally, I think you're asking for trouble. He's not good enough. That kid from UCLA is good. He is good. You watch his moves. You watch how he moves in the hips. Watch his hands. I think he's done some work with Aaron Donald. Because if you watch his with his hands, um, he could be down there for the Eagles. Leatu Latu, you watch what he does. He smacks him. Boom. He's worked with Donald or somebody that Donald works with because he knows how to slap them hands and keep his balance and his stay under his shoulder pads. He's a good-looking player, man. He's a good-looking player. Yeah, I'd be happy with the two also, man, but I don't I don't know if he's going to be there. Dan, this is a great, great move. Don't you see it? D uh, Dennis, yeah. You don't you you don't have to pay for Devontae Smith for three years. Yeah, you don't have to pay for him for three years. Absolutely. Devontae made this deal happen. How he structured it. Both work together. But this deal doesn't come off if uh, Devontae doesn't agree to that fifth-year option. Okay, okay. I'll take both. He took a haircut. Think what he did. He, in theory, took a $10 million pay cut in 25. You understand that. Because if they give him just a straight-out extension, that money would have kicked in next year. For him to take that $15 million and say, okay, because he's making 6-4, he had to say okay to the 25 deal. And then the Eagles went, holy cow, okay, well, let's give him his 25 annually. You're telling me it starts in three years? Sure. You're only paying him $21 million over the next two years, which is $10 million bucks. How's that not a great deal? But he had to say, okay. He had to say, okay. And believe me, now I think because he agreed to the extension, I think that $50 million goes into his bank account now. I have to do more. I have to wait and see how they structured it. If they split it up in the first end of the contract and in the back, we still don't know. We're guessing on the money. The 51 million, quite frankly, is the number I'm looking at, not the 75. The 75 is fantasy money. The 51 is real money. No, he no, he he does. Hey, Denny, he does love Philly. It, it's very evident that he loves Philly. Yell, I think that's got to go through the Players Association and Park Avenue on the particulars of the transfer of money and if it all hits and the T's are all crossed and the I's are all dotted. I think the Players Association and I think the uh, the league, I think they have to validate because – Here's what I know. Now, I'm sure a lot of shit has changed. My contract, when I signed my contract, my initial contract with the Buccaneers, I didn't go into supplemental draft. They tried to sign me as a free agent. The league voided it. They gave me um, $2.1 million over three years, and the league voided it. That's what Jerome's deal was, and they voided it. They said, no, 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 no. He wasn't made available to every team and every team complained. Chris Carter, Bosworth and myself had to get drafted. Then 
they gave me the same contract. Then the Players Association and then the league okayed the contracts. That's how that all works. I believe that's still intact, that fundamental thought process. Okay? This is big money. Um, okay. Let's see here. He's... he. Hey, you know what? Hey, um, Xander, I just got a text from Ice Cube. Would you guys like to talk to Ice Cube? Would you guys like to talk to Ice Cube? I just got a text. Would you guys like to talk to Ice Cube? Better say yes. All right, let me take a time out. Um, Let's see here. Bring them on. All right, we're going to do this. I'm going to take a time out. We're going to get Cube on. And don't forget, Gary Cobb's going to join us too. Let's shoot the ship with um, our friend here, right? Let's get Ice Cube on. Keep it here. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz & Bianculli Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles Big Sales National Football Show We're going to get our friend Ice Cube on here in a couple minutes And we're going to talk with him Catch up with him He offered Caitlin Clark Five million dollars To join Big Three so we'll talk to him a little bit about that. I know he's a gigantic fan of the Raiders. Um, I know I think he's coming to Philly too in the next couple months. So we're gonna catch up with our friend here in a second. But obviously, the news of the day so far has been, and I I, I want to make this very clear. And I've said this to you. 
The Eagles are the best contract and cap management team in the National Football League. I don't think that can be emphasized enough on how well they put these contract structures together. And this is what that guy does that's exceptional. This, this, this is his strength. There is no getting around that on how good he is when it comes to putting these contracts together like this. Now, again, the real hidden secret with how he does business is the cap hits. Hertz's cap hits are non-damaging to the structure of what you're going to do. Now, the question that I would do and I would say is, is there one big deal left out there? How many people would consider this a great deal when it comes to winning ball games this coming year? What this does is it secures your future. That's what it does. When you got people, understand this, when you got people that know how to put contracts together, cap integrity, like the Eagles do, Nobody on the planet's ever going to say that the Philadelphia Eagles aren't the best at that. Cap management and also putting contracts together. Talk about putting things together. Boy, I'll tell you what, every time we get an opportunity, he's been torn his ass off. He was in Phoenix, I think, last week. If I'm not mistaken, either Phoenix or Tucson, everywhere I look, Ice Cube is still torn, man. It's still shaking the world up. Let's bring our friend in here now, Ice Cube. He's shaking it up with Big Three, touring all around. Hey, Cube, you, you're still doing it, man. You're still touring. Hey, man, don't nothing change but the date. You know what I mean? We keep it moving. <laughs> we keep it moving. Hey, Cube, do you still have the same passion for it? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, man, you know, I love it. All aspects of it, you know, from, you know, doing songs, movies, uh, getting on stage. You know, now we need deep in sports. Um, so what's not to love? I mean, absolutely. And you know what? I love what you guys do and what you do. You know, you've got your hand in so much stuff right now. Big three, man, coming around the corner here, man. Are we going to see any new... Yeah. Additions? Are we going to see anything different this time around? What 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 does Big Three have in store for it? Man, great play. You know the thing is, is we play the game like it's supposed to be played. So the game is calibrated great. You know we don't have to do it. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel at all. You know our games are amazing. Um, first to fifty, so that. That works. No garbage minutes because there are no minutes. Then we have you know, our four-point circles, which you know fans love. Um, bring the fire. Going one-on-one -on -one to challenge a foul is a cool little wrinkle for three-on-three. -three. So, you know, we've calibrated the game over the last seven years, um, and we think the game is great, and, and we have – additional players and what's cool about the big three each year the play gets better and better you know, guys know what they need to do to win now uh coaches know what they need to do to win the strategies you know our games last about an hour so they're bite-sized you know for for you know anybody that's in the gaming and having fun and so you know it's it's really you know, right. It's a, it's just really about uh, throwing the ball out there and letting them get down. So I got a text message from Paul Pierce, and Paul said, "Once you once you send me some of that Caitlin Caitlin Clark money, and you get Paul Pierce to come out there, and I'll, I'll play big three hoop with you now." Nah, I think Paul's retired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I uh I tried to get Paul in the league when he first retired. And, uh, you know, he didn't get back to me. So I thought, I said, okay, that's that's my answer. He on the island somewhere. And so uh, we definitely, we definitely cool on that. 
Um, but he can still play. You know, we just not we not gonna spend that. You know, I would love for him to ball. I would love for him to play. And uh, you know, he's a he's a great player if he put his mind to it and, and he's ready to go. Um, and so, you know, I wouldn't turn him down. But he, he gotta be ready for the big three. QB did offer Caitlin um that money, and I thought it was bold. I thought it was awesome. I mean, especially with the money that the women are making in the WNBA now. I mean, that would be something different. It'd be like to me. I compared it to when Wilt went to the Globetrotters and then went into the NBA because he didn't want to play that one year at Kansas. So he went and played for the Globetrotters. I thought that that may have given her a good springboard to go in because just like Diana. Hey, Dan, Dan, no, nobody paid Will $5 million to go to the Globetrotters. So, <laughs> hey, don't compare us. Don't compare us to that. You know what I mean? It's a real offer. You know, real professional league should be breaking a lot of ground, you know, without, you know, money aside, um, breaking uh, a mental barrier in, in people's mind uh, where the women can can compete, you know, at this level uh, for money, you know. So it's um, it's a different animal. You know, I, I know, um, you know, it's a lot to take on for a young athlete to not only you know, play, um, you know, in our league, I mean, playing the WNBA, but also try to, you know, break barriers in a league like ours. It's, uh, you know, it's physical, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a cakewalk. And, 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 and the, um, the opposition ain't going to be getting out your way like the Washington Generals. So, (laughs) you know, they're going to come at her if she plays. Hey, I, I, I will say this too, you know, Everyone always looks at MJ Cube and goes, this guy here revolutionized the M. And I go, no, he didn't. It was bird and magic because it was Lakers Celtics. It was white, black. The hit from French Lick versus the smiling Magic Johnson. There's an equity to that. And there's a financial to that where you can prosper and benefit like the NBA did. The NBA just didn't sell a great rivalry, right, Cube? They sent black... They. They invested in black and white, and there's where the white dollars came from back at them with the NBA. I mean, they were doing tape delayed finals, Cube, when in 79 yeah. before those guys jumped on with the Sonics. I mean, so that I has mean, to be know, part of it. Well, thank God that that wasn't all they can hang their hat on. You know, the Lakers and the Celtics had a rivalry that went back to the 60s, maybe the 50s. So, you know, that wasn't all they was hanging their hat on. You know, that's what, you know, maybe the people uh, kind of, um, you know, I guess use that as extra fuel to, to scream and yell for their team. But at the end of the day, you know, this is not a, you know, it's not a black-white thing. It's really about being a smart businessman, a smart league, um, and breaking barriers. Um, you know, to me, it's a win-win for everybody if she plays, uh, because, um, it, it will, you know, break barriers, but it's, but it also, um, you know, open up the minds of people when it comes to, you know, can, can some women play, uh, men professional sports, you know, we don't know. And, and so Cube, it was, ha, has her people gotten back with you? Um, ha, ha, they showed any kind of interest in it? Well, we've been talking, you know, to different, you know, channels, put it that way. Um, we're still looking for a face-to-face with her and the family. We don't, we don't think anybody could, could, uh, really communicate, you know, what we're offering without, without a face-to-face. So, you know, we're still hoping to get that. Is the NBA getting in the way? I don't know what the NBA is doing. How come they don't like you, Cube? Uh, the NBA, well, you know, if you talk to the players, they love me. You talk to the coaches, they love me. You talk to the GMs, they love me. Talk to the owners, they love me. Um, the only problem we're having is with the top brass. 
uh, with Adam Silver, you know, maybe Mark Tatum, I don't know. But, you know, we got the tip-top brass who sees us as a threat, looks at the big three like uh, like boxing, looked at UFC, uh, and think we are a threat. And um, as it stands today, we're not. Are you a threat? Is no. it you? What's what's threatening about me? You know. Well, I'll um, tell you this. I'm treating. Uh, so I mean, I'm treating is- everybody fair. I'm treating athletes, coaches, uh, and the people that's in the league fair. And I'm given a lot of opportunities uh, with this league. So I don't know how I could be a threat. Well, then why do I get a conversation with Sean McManus going, who's stepping down? head of CBS saying that the league is pressuring television networks not to air your games. Which league? The NBA? Uh, TV networks are getting pressure from the NBA not to air your games. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. You have to ask them, you know, maybe they don't want us to present a better product. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, I mean, that's I, I, only thing I, mean, I can. You, I can I, you're uh, still shaking it up, see. dude. I mean, I'm here. That's what it's all about. You know, it's not about just going with the status quo. Um, it's a, you know, I got something cool. Like, why not? Ten weeks in the summer. Yeah, it's not hurting nobody. Everybody's having fun. Uh, people are entertained, making money. Um, where's the problem? Cube, what's what's the biggest issue you run into in running this league? Again, like I told you before, we get to rock on, and I talk to him all the time. He said that UFL thing is just absolutely the biggest challenge he's ever gone through. I mean, all the way down to color of uniforms, to the yeah. sideline. I mean, every little thing right. has to be dealt with and it's so challenging, especially on his time, and especially with a guy like you that has his hands in so much stuff. What's your biggest challenge running Big Three? Um, I mean, dealing with closed minds. That's my biggest <sighs> challenge, you know. So dealing with closed minds, dealing with, uh, you know, a little bit of, a, you know, collusion and, you know, this and that. That's my biggest issue. As far as the fans, they love it. The players, they love it. They, You know, the game is fun to play and fun to watch. We've elevated three-on-three three all over the world, you know. We did this before they put three-on-three three in the Olympics. And so we've done a great thing for the game. You know, matter of fact, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame agrees by, you know, presenting me with the Ice Cube Impact Award, which will be given out every year. So I've done nothing but uh, change the game for the better. What's that award mean to you, Cube? I mean, because I saw that, and what an honor to have that put on, having an honor named after you when it comes to making impact. I mean, you're talking about well-rounded people. I'm assuming you're going to have to have that award. It's not just about going up and shooting hoops. It's about going around and filling people's souls with being a well-rounded human. I mean, that's got to mean a lot to you. It does. You know, it's something that I didn't think about in starting this league. We just wanted to do the right thing, um, honor our heroes, um, and, and, you know, Give the fans something to look forward to in those dog days of summer when the, when the finals is over and we're waiting for the NFL regular season. Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to make the world a better place. And it's funny that I'm getting all this opposition. And, you know, the sports media, for the most part, is uh, ignoring or trying to downplay what we've built uh, over the last eight years. And, um, you know, it's frustrating, but, you know, I'm here for the long haul. May I ask you, Cube, I got two last questions for you, and I want to ask you a hard question because I DM'd Aaron Rodgers about this about three months ago, and I want to ask you something here. 
Do you think that the media and some of the people like at the NBA look at your vac stance that you had and they seemingly don't really support people who are in that camp and the media I'm talking more so than anything. And even Hollywood to some extent has actually gone after you in certain ways. I mean, do you feel that that is also part of the whole book of what you're dealing with over these last couple of years? I don't know what it is, but I know it's always some. <laughs> hey, you, when you weren't at the Super Bowl, I said, no, that shit's wrong. How could you have the best rapper in the history of Los Angeles? Not there. And you're like, well, hey, man, I'm part of the out crowd. <laughs> or so. I mean, I'm like, when I, you know, at the end of the day, I wasn't offended about not being at the Super Bowl. I was. I was, I was actually glad I wasn't asked because – when I do the Super Bowl, I want to do the Super Bowl. I don't want to be a guest for nobody. <laughs> yeah. hey, you, you're no warm up back there, right? <laughs> no. 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 Q, uh, movies. What are you working on? Are you working on anything um, coming up here where people are going to be able to catch you? Well, we always got our you know hand in the cookie jar, working Get on that something. Doc Ellis movie going, Q. <laughs> We're working on it, you know. We, it, it, it's a, you know, movies go in stages, and you know, sometimes they got to catch a, catch a, a wave, so to speak. So, you know, we'll catch it. And well, I saw your kid at WrestleMania 40, and we're based in Philly, and so just so you know, there he was there, and I'm I'm talking to Triple H, and I go, hey, is the kid, does the kid have a good? Yeah, no, no, he's. He was all hooked up, so I didn't realize he was a big wrestling fan. Are you a wrestling fan? Old school, you know what I mean? I used to love, you know, Jimmy Superfly Snooker, uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, the, the Iron Sheik and, you know, the old school dudes. Uh, so I don't know the new new dudes too much. My son, he's he love it. He's all up in it. You know, they need to. You need to give them some kind of job in the promotion and marketing or storytelling, dramatic department, because he he uh, knows all the storylines and where they should go. Boy, I could see Ice Cube doing being a writer for that, putting it, putting the show on for them guys. Hey, Cube, Big Three, when does it start up again, and where can people find it, website and all? June 15th, you can go to big3.com slash tickets. Uh, this year, we're going to be in Oakland, Tampa, Baltimore, Newark, New Jersey, Anaheim, California, Portland, Cincinnati, San Antonio, Nashville, and Boston. Fantastic stuff. Cube, it's always awesome catching up, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Anytime. Later, you got Dan. It. Take it easy. You got it. Our good friend Ice Cube, man, he always finds time for us. Love that stuff there. We are going to roll back into the headline stories. How about that, guys? Just He just texts me, goes, yo, what's up? I said, all right. <laughs> Why not? You guys deserve Ice Cube, right? All right. Let's take a quick time out. We'll reset. Back into the news of the day. Also, Gary Cobb from Fox 29 in Philadelphia will join us, as he always does, on a Monday at 4.30 Eastern time. Do me a favor, hit the like button, keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN.
Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech, we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral of everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz & Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Big Sills National Football Show. Appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you, Ice Cube, for stepping in with us. That was awesome. Um, You never know who's going to hit us up. What's up? I said, all right, no problem. No problem. All right. So let me throw this at you here. Hey. I know some of you are going to go like this. Really, Sills again? Where's the Jets Reddick deal? I'm going to tie this into Devante here in a second. Where's Reddick's deal? He was never offered one. He was never offered $17 million. He was never offered anything. Ever. He was never offered anything. They didn't want the player. Um, Joe goes, AJ's here next year. You'll find out in 10 days if they draft a receiver in the second round. God forbid they take one in the first round. That means he's got one year left. If they draft a wide receiver in the second round, he's got one year left. If they draft one in the first round, he's done at the end of the year. Okay. Brown got a 23.474 signing bonus. If Smith gets, he's not making $25 million this year. He's making 6.4. A twist goes, Reddick is gone. Who cares? Well, you're not better today because of the Devontae Smith deal. That deal didn't make you better today. How? He was on your team the last two years. How's that make you better today as a team? You got to remember something. If you're talked, they're two separate conversations. Two separate conversations. By the way, it's very evident. If the Eagles want to do something, they do it. If they don't, they lead you around by your nose like they did Reddick. Okay. He's making 6.4 million bucks this year. He's making 15.5 next year. His three-year extension doesn't kick in until 26. Jalen, go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Here, let me ask you something here. Who's got a bigger challenge? You also said Hassan didn't make us better. He didn't, but you didn't upgrade. You signed a lesser player. You could have had the better player. I'm not going to go back over that. All I wanted to know is where's the Jets extension? You could have had the player not done anything. 
You could have saved 17.8 million bucks. Once again, you're not addressing defense. You, you did not address it. You're not better today because of the Smith deal. The Smith deal is something that you're supposed to do. Reinvest, give another contract to a player you draft in the first round. The kudos, once again, is in the contract template. Okay? Ty goes, notice he talks about Jalen a third of the show because Jalen's your weakest link in the huddle. Let's take a look at that. Where he ranks. How many? Let, let's do something here. How about this one? Who's the best player in the 49ers huddle? Trent Williams? Who's the second best player? Christian McCaffrey? Who's the third? Um, Debo? Who's the fourth best? Kittle? Who's the fifth best? Ayuk? And then Purdy. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So he's the sixth best player in his own huddle. Now let's take a look at Hertz. Who's the best player in the Eagles huddle? AJ? Who's the second best player? Le uh, Lane? Who's the third? Mulata? Who's the fourth? Landon. Highest paid guard in the league. Fifth best, Devontae. Sixth best, Saquon. Seventh best, Hurts. He's the seventh best player in your offensive huddle, and you pay him the most. He's the weakest link in your offense. And if you look at it skill set wise, the two receivers, he's probably better than Goddard, but he's not gonna, he's not better than Saquon Barkley. So he's like your third best offensive weapon. Let's take a look around the teams that have these legitimate and great quarterbacks. And I won't even bring up Kansas City. I won't. Who's the best player in the Buffalo Bills offense? It's quarterback. Who's the best player in Cincinnati? Burrow. He's better than Jamar Chase. Who's the best player in the Baltimore Ravens huddle? Lamar. Those teams are built around the quarterback being the centerpiece. The two teams that have went to Super Bowls are not built around their quarterback. You're not building that team around your quarterback. You got an all-star team. You got a dream team. Eagles dream team too. Your quarterback is the weak link. <clears throat> Who is the weak link? Yes. Get get this. Lane Johnson, 
Best right tackle in the game? Yeah. Malata, third. Landon, highest paid guard. Jalen's the 15th best quarterback in the league. The, the center last year, thank God Kelsey retired or he'd be the eighth best player. You're not going to win a Super Bowl with a B quarterback. An A talent. Think about that. Here, you guys did something earlier for me. I asked you what about Jalen's career so far in uh, Philly. You go, it's about a B. Uh, how about the talent of the offense itself? A? So you got A offensive talent and a B quarterback. <laughs> okay. The position you have to be the best at, you're not. Or one of the top five. He's not. Sales, I get your point, but that really, that not really a fair comparison. Hertz gets dinged because San Fran has four no name offensive linemen. Both Hertz and Purdy are behind all their skilled position players. Hey, no doubt. Purdy doesn't have the offensive line that Hertz has. You're right. Andre says that Hertz is the real deal. He looks at one year wonder and calls him a real deal. He's a one year wonder, dude. He's the less he he get this. Why are you continuing to put all these deals together for all these players when you're not addressing the most important thing, your defense? You're the same team you were when you got crushed by the by the uh, Buccaneers. You're not any different. Are you? Where have you upgraded? Where have you improved? Hey, it's like asking a question. Are you better off four years from four years ago? What have you done to improve your team? I'll, I'll listen. Coaching staff. Well, those coaches are really okay. They're good, but they've accomplished nothing. What's their biggest accomplishments? Dak Prescott and what? What has Vic brought to the table in the NFL? Heck of a resume of being a good coordinator. Sure. Not really won anything. <laughs> RTF goes, well, who said that? Jalen drops dimes? Hey, Steve, you mean 15 interceptions? Those are dimes? Final roster's not complete yet. Well, so you're going to be waiting for cuts, and you're going to rely on rookies and free agents for your defense. That's not championship football. Where have you gotten better? Again, you know, and I, I was watching uh, John McMullen and Xander. And they were very excited about the Devontae deal. That's a separate conversation. The structure of the deal, great. The money, don't have to really pay for him for another three years. Great. True. But let's roll it back. Are you better today? as a football team, since your last game when you got murdered by the Bucks, No. Okay. So we're kind of running in circles here a little bit. We're still running. Get this. Ty goes, it's April, bozo. Okay. It was January, February, March, middle of April, May, June, July. You got 90 days to camp. Are you ready? You got less than 90 days until training camp. Are you ready? You think that defense is ready in 90 days? Do you? It wasn't ready for six months last year. But you think in 90 days. You're going to be ready with your garbage can 
defense. I, I was watching everybody today and how excited they were about the Smith deal. And I said, should I go down this rabbit hole? Or should I try to explain to them, okay, yeah, really a fine deal. Cap, all that stuff. It's great. But where have you brought talent in? On defense. To improve your football team. I think you've got a lesser roster right now. Without Redick on the team, you're a lesser football team. How is that making you better? The Devontae Smith contract option and extension. How's that made you better? You guys are crazy. Jalen will come out stronger than ever. Not me. I don't believe it. We'll see. I don't see it. I don't think he's that talented. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's exceptional. I think he had an exceptional year, and that's the best you'll ever see of him. Just like Wentz. When Wentz went for four grand, you never saw anything better after that. Why wouldn't that not play out for him too? And this kid's got more talent around him. Think about that. It would have been nice if you would have given Carson Wentz all that talent. You didn't give him shit. I mean, look at this stuff. You've gone out of your way to cover this guy's deficiencies, not being able to read defenses, and you're afraid he's going to get hurt. You've gone out of your way. And what's great about this is that it's now there's clarity. If that guy has another season, which I don't know if he will or he won't because he's never been consistent at all in his career, if he doesn't, it's he's out. And I will beat that drum every day. He's out. I don't think he's having some sort of bounce back year. I don't think Keller Moore is that great a coordinator. How many times did you guys take a shit on Dak Prescott the last six, seven years? Well, the coordinator was him. And now all of a sudden, he's an upgrade. Dak Prescott's a better thrower of the football than Jalen Hurts will ever be. Look at the numbers. By the way, Dak may have and does suck on ice in the postseason. They have won 36 games also the last two years, three years. They've won 36 ball games. And they did beat you for the East. Seals, just because you struggled with the next... My, my issues have nothing to do with Jalen Hurts. Nothing to do with it. Low-hanging fruit, Prince, has nothing to do with it. Quarterbacks in this league, again, people in here actually believe that Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins. When Cousins, there's a reason he makes that money. And is in his late 30s, still collecting that dough. Why? Because he's a superstar quarterback? No. Because he's consistent. Does he win a lot in the postseason? No. Is he a guy you want to build your team around? No. He's made more money than Tom Brady. And what is he, 36? Get this. Only the stupid people believe that. Believe what? That a guy just signed a $200 million contract at 37? We'll see what Hurts is doing at 37. We'll see. Off of last year, Jalen Hurts does not get another contract with me. It's got to be better. Especially with all that talent around him. Jalen Hurts does not get a con another contract off of those three years. Would you really give him $60 million? How about this? If you're so confident, would you extend and rework Jalen's contract for more money right now? 
I wouldn't. Matthew goes, Cousins is consistently losing primetime games. Well, how the fuck is he making $200 million then? You know why? Finding quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins. Ask the Bears. They've never had a guy like him. Ever. Washington hasn't replaced him. And Minnesota won't. And is he a top flight guy? No. You're making it seem like Kirk Cousins is garbage when he is the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. NFL history. If he sucks so bad, how has he made all that money? Because there's not a lot of talent at that position. There's massive failure at that position. It's funny how you act as if Jalen has been in the league for years and hasn't done anything. He's done, he's had one year out of four. Okay. Garoppolo went to a Super Bowl. I'm not sure. Brock Purdy's just went to one. Are you ready to write that he's a superstar quarterback? Hey, my friend, Niner all day. You think the 49er fans, if Tom Brady wanted to come back and play this year, you think they'd have a debate in San Francisco? If Brady still has it, and if they worked him out and thought he was good enough, they wouldn't put him in there? Hey, get that. Barb's right. Jalen Hurts has put up. He's never put up big numbers. Where's his? There's no big numbers. Never thrown for 25 touchdowns. Never thrown for 4,000. He hasn't thrown for 3,900 yards. You get two 1,000 yard receivers. That's unprecedented. Dude, if Kirk Cousins had those two guys as his receivers, he'd throw for six grand. Six grand. Six. Can we agree last year's defense was piss poor? Fangio's experience should make our defense average. Average is not good, but it's better. If not, Fangio hire was a mistake. I think the talent on the team's not that good. Xander <laughs> brings up an excellent point. Cousins is the big reason why Jefferson has had such a great start to his career. You don't think Justin Jefferson would have done that in Philly, do you? 49ers would take Jalen over Purdy. Never happened. No, thank you. Kyle Shanahan doesn't believe that. He wants to win from the pocket. He's not going to have a quarterback like that. They tried that. And his name was Trey Lance. And he couldn't coach that style. He's a drop back quarterback guy. Matt Ryan, Brock Purdy. They wouldn't touch that guy with a 10 foot pole. And by the way, he'd have all the turnovers still, like he did this past year. Okay. There's not a chance in hell he could play in that San Francisco offense. You actually have to throw the ball with not high volume, but be an accurate passer, which he is, Purdy. Across the board, he had higher numbers. And in his two years starting, superior to anything Hurts has done. He's actually been to two NFC title games. He's actually taken a team to a Super Bowl. He actually is the... Least amount of attempts and the third highest volume in passing yards. This guy's passing, averaging 10 yards a pass. His completion percentage almost led the league. If it didn't lead the league, I think it did. Jalen Hurts will never lead the league in passing percentage. This is not what he is. Corey, you're mistakenly taking what I'm saying about Kirk Cousins and thinking that I said that Kirk Cousins is the guy you build your team around. I, without a doubt, said that I would never. But you make it sound like 
throwing the ball in this league or playing quarterback in this league is something that's a given. There's a reason Kirk Cousins is the highest paid quarterback in the history of the National Football League. You know why? He's consistent. He puts up gigantic numbers. And like, by the way, Justin Jefferson, like Xander said, the reason he's going to get $30 million annually is because of Kirk Cousins. Who do you think was getting him the football? Look at Steve. Cousins and Sam Bradford? Where in the world would you get that? This guy's a 50,000-yard passing quarterback. When everything is said and done, he'll throw for 60,000 yards in his career. You're out of your minds. Cousins has never had a roster like Jalen Hurts. Exactly. Never. Ever. Hurts has the most expensive offense in pro football. He has the most gifted offense in pro football. There is no excuse. You fail, you're done. And I would get rid of him at the end of the 24 season. I wouldn't wait around for another bullshit season. You don't make it happen, son. You get bounced in the opening round, you're out. You're out. And God forbid you get hurt. Don't get hurt. You're out either way. You're out. I'm not waiting for you. You have no excuses to shit the bed. There's no bad coaching. There's no bad offensive plays. Nick Sirianni sucks. Those excuses are over with. Over with. And you know what, fans of Jalen Hurts and the Eagles? When are you going to come to your senses and say, you know what, Dan? You're right. There is no excuses. You can't keep going down that rabbit hole again. Hey, Prince Prince goes like this. If Jalen wins it all, Sills will look at the team and say the team got him there. No, Jalen Hurts doesn't play defense. I would have said the roster was complete and they did what they needed to do to win. A quarterback doesn't win you a Super Bowl. A team does. You can have the greatest quarterback of all time on your team. That does. That's not a given you're going to win it. I mean, can you imagine Patrick Mahomes with Jalen Hurts' talent? They wouldn't lose a game for the next four years. Wow. That's how far behind you are. Can't you get, get this? With all of your talent on your team, you're still behind Kansas City. You haven't upgraded your offense. You signed a guy to a contract. Congratulations. That didn't move you any closer to Kansas City or bettering the Kansas City. For that matter, Dallas blew your doorknobs off. Are you better than San Francisco right now because you signed Devontae Smith? No. They crushed you. You were roadkill to the Niners. Okay? Roadkill. I mean, the contract is here. The building of your roster is still so far away. Like, are you better than Detroit? <clears throat> I don't think you are. Are you better than Green Bay? I don't believe you are. Are you better than San Francisco? I don't believe you are. Why? Because you signed Devontae Smith to a creative contract? That made you better? My God, you didn't get any better today as a unit. Now, like to what Xander said before we went on the air, one thing's sure, that's part of being a GM. It surely is. But look at all the backslapping that people are doing for a GM finally getting the wide receiver position right. Is that what you're celebrating? 
Okay? <clears throat> you said we wouldn't be able to keep him. Professor, well, you're not paying him for three years. And you're not paying... You don't have two $25 million wide receivers. That doesn't kick in until 26. So at the end of the day, you've given yourself more time to get rid of AJ. Pretty creative way of looking at it. <clears throat> yeah. Sales, Eagles. Uh, I'd like to see Sam's if I could. Okay. Let me see here. Hurts starts out as a running quarterback, and now he's trying to become a pocket passer because he does not want to get injured. Give him a chance to be a better pocket passer. Steve wants to give this guy a chance. When you just worked all these contracts, made the guard the highest paid guard in the league, made Malata the third, I'll tell you, I don't think you're better today. But... Before I get Gary Cobb on, I'm going to I'm gonna say this before I get G Cobb on. By the way, Ice Cube had a great time on the program. He really appreciated coming on and pimping uh, Big 3. So we had a really great time with him. Before I bring Gary Cobb on, I'm going to say it one more time. I do believe in my heart that the Philadelphia Eagles are the best contract and cap management team in the National Football League. I don't think there's any question to that when it comes to cutting these contracts. And let's bring Gary Cobb on now and, and get his take on that and get his spin on this here because, boy, and it was especially when you look at those numbers, but that comment I just made, G. Cobb, do you mm -hmm. agree? Best cap yeah. management and best contract negotiating team in the league? I mean, how Howie does a great job of that. There's no doubt about it. Um, he finds ways to – <laughs> make the money available. You know, and I was wondering, of course, um, you know, uh, with uh, Devante coming up that, you know, what were they going to do? And now, you know, where he's coming in and really is making the same amount as AJ. Uh, they're both making 25. And, um, you know, how he knows how to work the numbers. I mean, he, he, uh, he definitely does a good job of that. Um, and you got to give him credit for it. And, you know, the thing is you want to keep your guys happy. And, um, you know, he does a good job of that. There's no doubt about it. How about this, Gary? Here And, and here's really the hidden gem of it. And by the way, the nuts and bolts of the cap hits aren't out yet because it's got to go through the NFL PA and the league office. But in 2024, he'll make $6.4 million on his last year of his rookie deal. And I, this is the creative part. Devontae had to accept the fifth-year option, which is 15-5 in 2025. So in theory, they're not paying this guy $25 million until 26, or 26 to 28 is a three-year $75 million with the $51 million bonus. That's 96-9, and it comes out annually to 19-4. So what I think he did... Mm -hmm. He wanted to get a Cooper Cup deal. And what I mean by that is, what's peace of mind? Organization likes me. Maybe I take a $10, $15 million haircut. I like mm -hmm. it here, but I like being an eagle. And for him to pick that 50-year option up and say okay to it, to add the extension on, I really think that this is a marvelous contract that was in a template that maybe other teams should look at because this, this is pretty impressive that you don't have to pay this guy for three years. Well, you know, uh, the, the thing he does is uh, he's going to get he's got his money guaranteed. And so he knows he's going to get the money, uh, which is what it's all about. I mean, it, if he has to wait a little time, he knows he's guaranteed this money. And uh, how he does a great job of the way they structure it and they find ways to uh, keep their guys signed. If they really want to sign a guy, they do a great job of doing it, um, you know, utilizing the different um, rules that they have. Now, I don't understand all the rules. I don't know all of them, but they do a great job of getting their guys signed, keeping the guy happy, which ultimately is what it's all about. You know, am I making the money that I think I deserve? And, 
You know, he's averaging where he's making 25 a year. So he's cool. They, they, he, you know, the way they do it, <laughs> you know, he doesn't really, um, I, don't, I don't imagine the players get into it too deep as long as they get their money. How about this, Gary? But, and, and that part of the conversation, reinvesting in your draft picks mm -hmm. is wonderful and it's part of the general manager's job. Yes. But what I'm trying to tell people is this. You're not better today um, as a team because you still, and for whatever and for the love of me, man, mm -hmm. they address Mulata. They address Landon. Yeah. They address Devontae. Yes. They get a $10 million running back. And then you look on the other side of the ball and people go, Sills, this is a Super Bowl. I'm like, Hoss. You're no better today than you were the last seconds ticking off of the Buck game. You're not better. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, with Reddick not being on the team, you're probably worse. So I'm like, I, I, I think fans, they get excited about these contract extensions, and I think it's wonderful. But, Gary, do you believe they're better today because uh, of that signing? I, I mean, I can't, say, I can't say that they are better, um, especially defensively. You know, they're really um, – it's almost like they're saying, well, Fangio is going to work magic, you know. They are going into the season. They're thinking that he is going to have a very good year and he's going to find a way to utilize uh, to um, to take the talent he has and to uh, get the most out of it. And, and you know, you know, obviously he's selling it because it just seems like he's got a lot of power over there now. If you see the way oh, Fangio, yeah. they're doing things the way he wants them to do. Now, I guess, you know, even more than um, Kellen Moore. Yeah. He he is un, he's under the gun, man. He's, he's going to be looked upon to work magic because, of course, they've been talking about him before he took the, uh, the defensive coordinator's job because uh, the guys that had been here were his guys. How tough a job – who has a tougher job, Gary, Kellen or Vic, this coming season? Now, that's a very good question because, I mean, I, I probably I – would, I would say uh, Vic. I mean, you know, Kellen looks – I mean, Kellen's got talent. I mean – Everywhere. He's got talent. I mean, the, the thing, he's got to utilize it properly, but these guys have all proven – a lot of them are Pro Bowl level players, and if you put them in the right position, you know they should be able. To, he's got a lot of talent. I mean, so I, I would have to say Fangio. He's definitely the one that's got the toughest job uh, because you know you you got you got a lot of. I mean, look at the, the pass rush wise. Look, you got those young kids, man. Come on. Some of which, like you know, Nolan Smith, he hasn't proven he can play on this level. And the other yeah, guy, he, Huff, hasn't proven he can play three downs. No, he, he and he just he had he got a taste of a little bit. Now, you know, I, I haven't been go back and look and see how he got all of his 10 sacks, but you know, he can get in there where he might have got three in one game, you know, and he, he found somebody that he was able to take advantage of, and then the whole rest of the season he's got seven, you know. So you know, I, I have I can't say I've studied him very closely, but he, he's so young and he's he's only did, he's done it you know one year and you. I hope they're right. I mean, I hope these guys hey, come in and play well, man. Me too, man. Hey, how about this one? How do you think AJ Brown is looking at all of this? How do you think <laughs> a guy like that, when all of a sudden? The bag of money now is hanging right next to him on the scale with a guy yeah. with that kind of ego. Yeah. You know, he calls WIP your former home to get therapy sessions with the afternoon guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm just I'm wondering, Gare, how 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 do you think how do you think the patient's gonna handle this with that bag of money going over to Devontae? Now, now I know he and De Devontae are close, you know. At the same time. You know, I mean, you know, I I don't I don't think he looks down at Devontae, but he feels like he's the best. Well, if I was Michael Coffer and I saw Gary Cobb 
get a contract that made as much as me. And I'm going like, well, you know, I love me. Me and G Cobb go back a long way. I love him. Yeah. But, hey, hey, Ron, Ron, Ron Hughes. What are what, right. you doing over here, man? <laughs> you you got to bump me up some. I know he I know he feels that uh, he deserves the most on the team. I, and you know that he feels that way. Because um, he's produced the most. He, he has he has produced the most. That's right. He is he has produced the most. I mean, um, do you think he goes in there with his agent and <laughs> goes like this now? Well, hey, that's really great. So you're paying him twenty five million for a job that's a lesser job than what I'm doing. Mm. Don't you think I deserve a little uh, bump in pay here? A couple million to get me up near um, Cooper Cup and to get me up near like maybe Devontae Adams. You know, he, he he definitely probably, you know, thinks he thinks about it. I don't know if he's going to do anything. Um, you know, I, I think he's a team oriented guy. <laughs> we'll see. But, but, you know, ultimately, everybody, you're not there to uh, to get trophies. You know, you're really there to get paid. You know, that's that's the thing that really affects you the most. You know, trophies are great. But you need your money. You don't get paid for winning Super Bowls if you're a wide receiver. You get paid for targets, catches, and yards. That's right. Okay. And, and, and hey, 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 wait a minute. He go. He's gonna go like this. Well, so for the last three years, I've got three thousand yards. The young fellow over there has got twenty two hundred, and I, I'm putting up these historic numbers in Eagle history, and you're paying in the same number as me. Well, I now feel underpaid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely think that um, there's no question that, you know, he, he, he's he got to feel like he deserves the most. He thinks he's the best wide receiver in there. And really, you know, I don't think Devontae thinks he's better than him, but he knows that he brings certain things to the table that Devontae doesn't have. Devontae runs great routes. And in fact, da Devontae has made AJ a better receiver just because you can see that because you see him over there talking during practice. And Devontae has a, uh, a, a a great understanding of the of the game, especially running routes. He does a great job of setting a guy up and everything because he's not a burner, but you see how he gets open. And he a lot of times he's wide open, you know, because he runs the routes very well. And uh, and see, and, uh, AJ has has learned things about him. But at the same time, AJ feels he's the best receiver. He has been the most productive, and you got to give it to him. So he, want, he wants the most money. Hey, and you know, he, hey, I think that that's coming. And, and that goes with now. the position too. Yeah, you know that goes with the position. I mean, it does go with it. How how many times have uh, you know, you got a wide receiver that didn't think they were the best on the team and the, and, and 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 everything and on, you know. So uh, so that wide receiver me, position always has a lot of ego. You're paying me the same money on a guy who's done lesser than me. Yeah. Well, he knows – He, I guess he feels on his next contract, of course, he, he's going to go up. Oh, if he's here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's three years from now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I, I think he's going to be cool. But we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, Gary, is this a fair comment? Hey, Jalen, there's no more off-ramps. This is – here we are. I mean – we can't do anything else for you, son. Mm -hmm. The coordinator's new. Yeah. Got you a shiny running back. Yeah. Okay. Got your receivers locked up. Best yeah. old line. I mean, come on now. This yeah, got to be a really great – this got to be a 22 season, though. No? Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Jalen and the offense, they, they, they got to uh, gotta put it out, man. I mean – you know, they're averaging 30 and up. Come on. You know, the, the, to stop all these guys defensively, because you sit back and you look at the at the offense and you think, well, what are you going to play against them? What are you going to – you got to you gotta pick your choice. You got to try to take something away. But whatever you take away, you're leaving something else open. And they could just come to the line of scrimmage and call the play at the line of scrimmage. And, and that's probably what they're going to do because you cannot take everything away against these guys. And I think I think some people are going to say, we would rather Saquon run for 200 yards. 
So wait, hold on here now. Yeah. So you're gonna pay two guys twenty five million dollars mm-hmm. and a quarterback fifty. Yeah. To run the ball twenty five times. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> hey, now, I'll tell you this. That if I'm thinking, I'm going like, okay, that's the way I'm gonna play them. I, I would rather him do that and and uh, and try to take away those wideouts. You know, because they're not gonna score to me as many points if they're if they're running the ball that much. See. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Eagles do because teams could say, okay, we will let you run the ball. We're going to try to take away your passing game. Because the passing game, that's where you score quicker. I mean, if, if they're exploding in the passing game, you could go look in, they got 24 points in the first half, see. But if they're running the ball and Saquon is, let's say he's running the ball 25 times a game. You know, chances are they're not going to score as many points. Do you believe Mm -hmm. we're we're 10 days out from the draft? Yeah. It's going to be completely heavy defense, defense and players. Um, And would you do this, Gary? 22. At 22. You either package 22 and 50, move up. Or do you go 22 and 50, which is a second rounder, and offer that to the Denver Broncos for Patrick Sertain? Because that would give then Denver this. Denver needs a quarterback. Right now they're sitting at 12. They would have 12 and 22. They could take 12 and 22, move up to three with New England, and get a quarterback. For Sean Payton, they don't have a court. What's the point of having Patrick Sertan on your team when you can't score points? I mean, you're right. I mean, that's a good point. Now, Sertan is going into what year? Listen, he, here, here's the beautiful. He's yeah. got one year left on a rookie deal, and okay. he's he's in the same situation as as um, Devontae because they were drafted in the same draft. Mm-hmm. So he's on a rookie deal this year. <laughs> Get this: they picked up the fifth year option already in Denver. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to pay him big money until three years from now at that corner position. No, no, wait a minute. I thought you said that um, he he's at the end of his rookie of, his, of the no, rookie he's got deal. One more year on his rookie deal. They're gonna May second. They've already done it though. They've picked up the fifth year, so they have him on the six point four. Then he comes back next year for fifteen five. He's the best corner in football. Mm-hmm. The third year, that's when you'd have to start talking extension in the offseason for him. So you would have three years of him still being under market value where these corners today are going for $23 million. And, and, and you would get him for 22 and 50. Yes. Get for the for the 22nd pick and the 50th pick. Whew. I mean, he, he's he's an outstanding player. He's the best corner in the league. Hey. And look what he would do to your defense immediately. You could you 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 would have him, yeah, CJ Bradbury, and you would have Slay back there with one of the best young corners in the pro in pro football. That I, helps I mean, your safety it, it position does. out, and it helps your pass rush out. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, that definitely would be a tempting move. And they also made a call in November, them and the Niners, on his availability. Mm. I mean, would you do it? You definitely would seriously consider it. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think I think you definitely consider doing and that. They've got the cap space to do it. Wait, 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 what did you say about the cap space? They have forty million right now, almost in cap space. I I don't. Um... I don't see why, and you know. Here's the other thing. Vic drafted him. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it definitely is something that be very tempting to do. I mean, uh, unless they got their eye on something else or, you know, and I know it's a position that they look at and in their formula, they want pro bowl level corners. Well, he is. You know, and so uh, he fits what they would want. I mean, he definitely, he fits that. And, and you know, he's still young. He's still very young. 
And he's uh, he's shown he's got the talent to. I mean, because you you got a guy that could be locking down one of the sides, you know, uh, which will allow you to help years. other people. He's got that kind of talent, so I, I think it's a, a move you definitely would. Uh, would I, I would think they would do it because that's one of their positions. You know how they are about the cornerback position. You know they they want they are willing to to put money, draft picks, value in that position, and that's been their formula. We'll see how how it works out, but he would definitely fill um, he would fill one of the gaps because you know this is a different way of going about it, but. You know, you know, if they're looking at the draft, they're looking at cornerback position. And of course, with all those kids, you don't know how good they're going to be. I mean, you think they're going to be good, but you don't really know for sure. They don't have a certainty on that defense anywhere at any position right now. Watch this, Gary. Certainty, left tackle, offense, excellent. Left yeah. guard, highest paid. Yeah. Certainty, right tackle, certainty. Mm -hmm. um, receivers, certainty, back. Well, you got to worry a little bit about the health and all that, but still on defense, yeah. there's not one thing that's a certainty out there. Will Jalen Carter take the next step? I don't know. I'm assuming he will. Yeah. Okay. Will Josh Sweat stay healthy? Okay. Outside of that, no. I mean, Jordan Davis right now, Gary, has not earned a second contract. In that no, he building. hasn't. No, he hasn't. Nope. So, I mean. And, and, yeah, you, you, you definitely got question marks all over that defense. That is true. How about this, Gary? Just remember I told you as we leave here. Watch this. From AJ. Hey, man, congratulations on your cash. And then he does this. Hey, Billy, how'd this dude make as much money as me? And I've, I've, I've got three grand worth of yardage, and this guy's got two. How's he making the same money? My contract, I've outplayed my contract in Philly. I mean, he's, he's right, but... <laughs> He signed the deal, but but he's right. Oh, he's right. yeah, that holds up. <laughs> hey, 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 in due time, you know, uh, if he stays here, they're going to take care of him, but they're going to have to do something. They know Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They know oh, it. You, I, hey, you just gave me another topic here. So I think you might get, hey, Garrett, how do you think, do you think this goes like they're good boys, they're teammates and everything? They're boys, they hug it out. Yeah. Or do you think this guy eventually starts coming around and starts going like this? What if he starts the season out and he's leading the NFL in yardage and he's got the most catches? You think he's going to sit tight on $25 million when the guy over there is making the same money as him doing less? I think I think he'll be cool. I mean, oh! <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean it. I can oh, hey, get this. You can't look me in the face. I can tell you don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the thing I'm doing is I'm hoping he doesn't do that. I'm hoping he does it because, you know, it, it, it'll start stuff on the team. But, you know, I mean, with, without a doubt, I mean, if, if I were in that position, I'm, I'm laying in the bag going, man, yeah, I've outplayed and we're making the same amount of money. I played my man, you know, but we're making the same money and, and I've outplayed him. Hey, and I love him. Yeah. They, love ain't got nothing to do with my No, baby. it ain't got nothing to do with that. And so he figures, hey. He should be making 30 now then. Oh, God. Thank you, Gary. Gary Cobb, Fox 29. This this can't – what great drama that's going on with that. I appreciate you, Gary. I, Thank you, my I, friend. I hope it doesn't blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Gary Cobb, Fox 29. Make sure you catch him, man. That's good stuff right there. Woo! I'm not even going to take a break on this one now. Hmm. See, my guy, hey, hey, James, 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 you see, Xander, I have to have a follow-up to my over 100K viewed take from last week. And so here it is. How long before A.J. Owens? looks over at his agent and says, wait a minute, he's a $25 million wide receiver for the Eagles? Well, I've outperformed that. And I've outperformed my contract then. What the Eagles did with that money, 
They set their own market in their own building. A.J. Brown has exceeded that $25 million contract and the one he's currently on. Should the Eagles give him more money? Renegotiate his contract? How in the world can Devontae Smith make $25 million a year when he's been the lesser player and the lesser targeted? If you're A.J. Brown, you're not paid for winning Super Bowls. You're paid for numbers, especially at that position. Devontae Adams is not paid. What, what's the number? Here. Devontae Adams is making $28 million. He ain't won the Super Bowl, got nowhere near one. Cub signed this deal after, 26-7. DK Metcalf, $25 million. I think A.J. Brown's going to start complaining and bitching about the fact that the guy on the other side is a lesser talented player and lesser productive. And he'll bitch and want more money. You know he will. You know he will. Part A.J. will get more money. He already has... A crap load of money. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. <laughs> Look at Joe. It's not a good take because you don't want to hear it. One guy is giving you two grand. The other guy, three grand. And he's put himself in a position to be considered one of the better wide receivers. I would never say Devontae Smith is better than A.J. Brown. So, will he hold out for more money? Devontae Smith will never have 1,500 yards as long as A.J. Brown is on this team. That ain't happening unless A.J. gets injured. Okay? Ace, thank you. Big sales. Retook us to five NFC title games and one Super Bowl and failed. Peterson won one with less talent here than Reed. So is it more on Holmes for success or his it all on McNabb? We failed. Um, I think it's I think it's the quarterback and the head coach work better than what Reed and McNabb did. I think you have to have a really good play calling head football coach, which Andy is. And McNabb wasn't the talent enough to win. I, I, I just think McNabb was a good player. Actually, if you think about it, Donovan McNabb can make the argument. A better quarterback than Dak because of the postseason success. By a nudge. I mean, the only thing Donovan has over Dak is the postseason success. But, um, yeah, I mean, I look at both those guys and see the same guy in Dak Prescott. I, I, I see Dak. Jalen Hurts is throwing for 5,000 yards this year, so they'll both get 1,500. <laughs> so, well, hang on. You know it's going to be really funny? Okay, so wait a minute. You gave a running back 10 million bucks for what? 500 yards? Hang on here. So, senor, now that you got your two shiny trinkets at wide receiver, Hertz is going to throw for 5,000 yards, 25 interceptions. And he's, and you're going to try to tell me then that what is it? Saquon gets the ball four times? Oh, man. Oh, I cannot wait for this. 1,200 yards from Barkley before he gets hurt. 1,200 yards? 
Well, he's not an upgrade then. That's what you've been averaging the last two years. How's that an upgrade? How's that an upgrade? <laughs> How is that an upgrade? Last two years, you've averaged that. Woo! Oh, yeah, we got to do that one, man. A.J. Brown is going to start complaining. No, come, he makes as much as me. I'm a better player. <laughs> Dude, this guy went on an afternoon show on a radio station and cried. And he's making $25 million. I'm making $25 million, and I can't understand why everyone hates me. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares if anyone likes you? You have F you money. You have go away money. Who cares? Hey, wait, wait. And what's the guy's name? Joe Fritz? Hey, Joe, Joe. It's okay. Give this guy a standing ovation. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed what? <laughs> Average that with Hertz, Swift, Miles, and Boy Gainwell. Dummy. <laughs> no. You've averaged 1,200 yards the last two years from two players. One guy almost had 1,300 yards, and last year he had a guy almost at 1,100 yards. You know how to add, right, senor? That wasn't Jalen Hurts. Had nothing to do with those guys' yardage. Miles Sanders had 1,239 or 1,249. And last year, Swift had just about 1,100 yards. What are you talking about? 1,200 yards, kid. Adding? Adding? Yeah, almost 1,100 yards last year. Yes. Adding? And Kyle goes, Sills, the Titanic sank 112 years ago from today. Well, about... 68 days ago, the USS Eagle went down <laughs> right next to uh, the Buckaroo pirate ship at Raymond James. Terrible tragedy. You should have seen it. No lives were spared, including Hassan Reddick. We lost him at sea. <laughs> hey, it was a terrible, terrible thing. Okay? It was a terrible thing. We lost Hassan Reddick at sea. So, Kyle, the USS Eagle went down right there at Buckaroo Island, known as Raymond James. Crazy, man. And we lost Reddick at sea. He's down with Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> ah. we're, we're, hey, yeah, we lost to the one-eyed pirate, Baker Mayfield, right there. And then Gasparella happened. And there you have it. Holy cow. The USS Eagle went down. Did you see it? Went down in flames, too. Went down at the head. <laughs> hey, it went down at the head. <laughs> hey, Nick, you're finished. <laughs> the Eagle defense got Mayfield paid. <laughs> really? Really? So they blamed that whole entire season on Hassan Reddick. They threw him overboard. And Captain Vic <laughs> is now going to be the new head of the ship when it comes to the defense. Hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm Captain Vic. <laughs> uh, Sills, how do you know Moore's not tailoring the offense to Hurts' strengths? So here's why, Kevin. Tell Kevin why Kellen Moore is not building the offense to Jalen Hurts' strengths. Like running the ball. Why isn't he? Before we even see the offense, why don't you tell the man? Tell Kevin why. Tell Kevin why they're not going 
to tailor the offense to his strengths. It ain't throwing the ball. That ain't his strength. Never has been. Because how he won't let him? Close. Because it's too much money into the offense? Getting warmer. The owner doesn't want it. Some truth. Come on, guys. It's simple. It's simple. You don't go out and sign a $10 million running back if you're going to have your quarterback running, are you? I mean, there's a reason Baltimore signed Derrick Henry, right? They don't want their quarterback getting hit in open space, right? So they're hoping not to have him put in harm's way because of Derrick Henry, right? Well, that's what you did with Saquon Barkley. Right? So how are they building the offense again? Around him? And his strengths? No. No. They're going to continue to make him a pocket passer. Not saying for Hurts to run all the time, just at times. I don't believe they're going to do any of that. Was Dak Prescott some sort of sprint option quarterback or RPO guy? I must have missed that. RPO with Barkley and Hertz. Okay, senor. RPO with Barkley and Hertz. And you've got two wide receivers combined make 50 million. Ooh, I can't wait. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> they want Hertz to be like Dak. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I never knew Dak ran for a ton of touchdowns and a ton of yards when he first started. Okay. I didn't know that. Let me take a look at that. I didn't realize that he ran for seven, 800 yards and 10 touchdowns when Hertz can't throw the ball like Dak. He can't. I know that. Dak Prescott, stats. I, I didn't realize that he ran like Jalen early in his career. Let's take a look at that. Let's see here. Here we go, rushing. 282, 327, 305, 277, 146. 182, um, 240, six touchdowns. Six. He, he was no runner. He was never a runner in his career. He's a passer. He was never a runner. It's not true. Okay? 200 yards rushing is not a running quarterback. <laughs> That's not Jalen Hurts is 700, 800. And 10 touchdowns. That's a running quarterback. Okay? That's a running quarterback. Barkley is a runner. No two. Um, when healthy. What do you suggest the Eagles do? Move on from Hurts? Oh, no. Nick, I want him to play 2024. And if he sucks, yeah. Move on. Are you going to sit around and wait another year? I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what it is. I don't know. You have no excuses now. A brilliant coordinator in Kellen Moore. You're really good offensive line and all of your weapons. There's absolutely no excuse. And if he fails... 
It will be a this will be a bigger disaster than Carson Wentz because you know why? He has ten times the weapons around him Wentz ever did. The Eagles have done more for Jalen Hurts than they ever did for Carson Wentz, and he won more. And he put up better numbers as a member of the Eagles. Wentz put up better numbers, one more, with lesser talent. Is that fair? Is that fair? Is that fair? Wentz, from that, can't be faulted on offensive talent. I mean, Carson Wentz was never given the offensive talent that Jalen's been. The coaching was better. That's a fact. Coaching was better. It's not fair he never won a playoff game. I asked you, he won more. You're the reason you had home field advantage. And he put up better numbers than what you did with lesser talent. Matthew goes and never won a playoff game. And your guys two and three. Congratulations. Okay. And your guy has all that talent and couldn't beat a team you were up by 10 in the fourth quarter. Okay. Wentz was MVP runner-up and won the Burt Bell Award. And yes, he did. 2022 looked good. Um, before Wentz went down, he was going to be the clear favorite MVP. The Eagles didn't do all that stuff for him. They didn't have to. Why? Because they had better coaching. I think that's an indictment also on Nick Sirianni with all that talent. I mean, really. Heads are going to roll if you don't get this done this year. And personally, I don't think you're going to because of the defensive side of the ball. I think you got a lot of talent in offense. Really, almost to a point now where you have so much talent, it'd be hard to fail. It'd be hard to fail. But you have no talent on defense. Hertz wasn't the reason we lost the Super Bowl. Really? You must have forgot that fumble scoop and score. So is Jalen Hurts a starter or a bench guy? He was a second rounder. Nobody in Philly wanted this guy. Correct. Now they're talking to you like this guy's the best thing ever to step in Philadelphia. He's not. You think that guy's better than Donovan McNabb? He's not. Jalen Hurts is not better than Donovan. He's not a better player. And I'm not a Donovan McNabb guy, as you know. He's not better than Randall. Is he better than Wentz? I don't know. Wentz has done pretty much everything he's done. Oh, I forgot. He's gotten to the Super Bowl. He played really good in it. Okay. Yeah, I know. I got it. Everyone is overlooking the fact that this team cannot tackle. Michael. That's exactly the side of the aisle I'm on. It's not so much about the offense, which failed last year miserably as well. Okay? Matthew says Hurts is the best quarterback ever in Philly. Off of those three years, you don't really have a lot of good quarterback play then. 
21 was okay. 22 was great. 23 was okay. <laughs> now you're not allowed to tackle. So that, hey, that's going to even make it even more. Randall Cunningham with this amount of talent and coaching this year would win five Super Bowls. <laughs> Let me just say this to you, bleed green. Randall Cunningham had this talent in today's NFL. He'd be Patrick Mahomes. Wentz was throwing the ball to Travis. Fulgam, can you remember him with this offense? Can you imagine him with this offense? If Wentz had that offense, Barkley, Wentz had bums. Um, McNabb, Vic, Wentz, Foles, Hurts. Yeah, that sounds right. In the recent, yeah, that sounds right. If you don't want to go into Randall's day, sure. Imagine Randall with this old line. Good night. <laughs> Dude, if Randall Cunningham played a net huddle with those players that are in that huddle right now with today's NFL rules, Randall Cunningham would be fighting Patrick Mahomes tooth and nail for Super Bowls. He, that guy was electric, man. He was doing Patrick Mahomes shit in a league where you could take quarterbacks' heads off and receivers' heads off running down the sidelines. You 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 run the players that he, you run that kind of offense with him. My God, Randall was an electric dude, man. He was an electric player. Okay. I mean, Jalen. I I always th I've said it. I think Randall Cunningham was Patrick Mahomes, just ahead of his time. He was totally unstoppable. Dude, Ronnie Lack can't play in today's NFL. And I'm not sure Lawrence Taylor could. I, I'm sure LT couldn't. Yeah, underdog. He he was so wonderful to watch play. He he really was. He was wonderful to watch. I mean, my opinion, Randall Cunningham is one of the most gifted players I ever watched play pro football he was and they had nothing shitty play callers not very good offensive line terrible offensive line and he just made shit work damn shame if they would have had four players on that offense for him the eagles would have won a super bowl during that era with that defense absolute travesty that they didn't want to spend the money on that other side and isn't it funny they had all the defense can you imagine if you put Buddy Ryan in today's Eagle management and you put that thing together with Gang Green and what you're doing with your offense? You couldn't like you couldn't afford to keep that defense together in today's NFL. Maybe how we could come up with a way. Jerome would be making 25. Reggie would be making 35. Seth would be making 20. Waters would be making 15 to 16. Um Wes Hopkins would be making 15 to 16. Clyde Simmons would be making 20. I mean, I don't know how I don't I don't know how you would keep all that together. I I mean that you I don't I mean Reggie White would make 35 million dollars today. He'd be the highest paid player, maybe, of any position outside of quarterback. Okay. Reggie would make a hundred. <laughs> hey, uh, and I'd feel okay paying that. <laughs> then your dumbass owner comes out saying Reggie White's best years are behind him. You're like, damn dog, should go back to your boat in France. Okay, you don't know what you're talking about. I got my Kelly Green Cunningham jersey with, bringing home for Jerome Patch. That's dope, dog. Seth was an eight rounder, undrafted today. Imagine that. Seth Joyner would have been an undrafted UDFA, and he'd be a $20 million linebacker today. Like, you'd have to pay him what you paid Patrick Queen on a three-year, $18 million contract. That's, that's what you'd have to pay him. 
You might have to pay him Roquan Smith money. LT would make $300 million from the Jones contract. Hey, dude, Jesus. Lawrence Taylor today? I don't know, man. $45 million. I don't know. Jerry Rice? 35, 40? I, I don't know. And, and and again, it's not that the guys today are not as talented. It's the rules. That's what I'm looking at. I, I think the guys today are gifted. But it's the rules. You can't touch these guys. Jerry Rice running down the field and no one touches him off the line of scrimmage. You can't mug him. There's no defending him. There's just no defending him. You, you could not defend that. Get this, Jerry Rice, Devontae Smith, nowhere. They're not even in the same galaxy. Even, even Andre Risen. Even, even Andre Risen. Oh, wow. Look at what Mark Kelly Green just did. You imagine Doug Peterson with this roster? You know why you can't have? a really big time head coach in Philly because it would diminish Howie Roseman. You have a puppet head coach. You know why? Because it accentuates the GM more and puts the GM more in the spotlight. Underdog sills. Any chance Clyde Simmons gets his gold jacket during any, during my lifetime. God, he's so close. I would make this point to you, underdog. Clyde Simmons is closer to being a Hall of Famer than Fletcher Cox. And I think Fletcher Cox is a really great player and really close. But in my opinion, Clyde Simmons was, he was overshadowed by Jerome and by Reggie, of course. Okay? Look at Taylor. Jerry Rice was getting 1,000 yards at 40 years old. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. You imagine him, shit, Jerry Rice could probably get you 500 yards today. Man. All right, I power hour coming up. We're going to reset. And again, I, I want to make it clear. I think today was a great day for the business side of the Eagles. My question is still the football side. And that's where I'm coming from. I'll explain. Hit the like button. Keep it here. National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. 
The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles Cowboys build their team through the draft Not through free agency <clears throat> They're going to sign a player But they're not going to sign a ton of players Like the Eagles do that's not what they do. Some would go, what's more successful? Well, obviously, since 2000, the Eagles have been more successful than the Cowboys. It takes more work. And the problem that the Cowboys have is that they don't make the tough cuts. What I mean by this, you see, it's tougher to cut a player in Dallas than it is in Philly. Why? Because Jerry doesn't like to spend money on free agency. The Eagles will cover up a mistake with money. And they do it. And it's 50-50. But they do do it. Cowboys don't do that. Okay? They never. Once again, Niner. Let me throw this at you here, Niner. How many people in San Francisco love to pick, you think, when it came to Trey Lance? Right? Did Kyle Shanahan flip-flop on Trey Lance? Did he? The guy who actually orchestrated a three-first-round pick move with Miami to bring him to San Francisco? Did Kyle Shanahan flip-flop on Trey Lance? Did he? Okay, I mean, once again, players' performance and coaches' performance dictate one's career, not an opinion. Senor goes, stupidest quarterback trade in the world. In hindsight, they thought, that, wait a minute. That wasn't really my point, senor. The point was is that Kyle Shanahan was so sold and had so much conviction in Trey Lance as a player and a prospect, he was willing to give up three first-round draft choices, almost half of a decade of the 49ers' future for Trey Lance. And he flip-flopped and traded him. Let me ask you this one. Do you think the Denver Broncos flip-flopped on Russell Wilson when they gave up three ones? Was it three ones or two ones? Forget what that whole package was. Did the Broncos flip-flop? On Russell Wilson. There's another one. Did Howie Roseman flip-flop on Carson Wentz? Did Howie Roseman flip-flop on Car Carson Wentz? Yes, they flip-flopped. That's what you call a flip-flop? See, I don't call it that. I call it a player never living up to his abilities. Flash in the pan. But yet, Hertz is not a flash in the pan to you. Okay. 
That's kind of wishful thinking. So the Jets, they draft Zach Wilson with the second overall pick at a BYU. Is that a flip-flop? The Eagles draft Jalen Rager in the first round. Is that a flip-flop? Andre Dillard was the first round pick. Is that a flip-flop from Howie? Or a player just not playing up to his ability. Or them getting it wrong. Okay, one-year change of mind? Russell Wilson was a one-year change of mind. Well, let me go here then, senor. Was Brian Johnson, Sean Desai, and Matt Patricia, did Howie flip-flop? Did they? Okay. So there's really no such thing as that. Yeah, no experience to ex- – there, there's – again, there's no such thing as that. Circumstances change. Circumstances change. Players not playing well. Uh, people around them, environment around them. How about this? Look at Jalen. The Eagles flip-flopped twice on him. Here's how. Well, the first year he started, they had two first-round draft choices in case he shit the bed in 22. I think they were going to go into the draft, and I think they were going to draft a quarterback. But he has a fabulous year. Great. And they give him money off of one, really, two years starting. Not me. Way too soon. What was the difference between giving him the money and calling him a franchise and not calling Brock Purdy when he, Purdy did more and you guys called him shit? That never made sense to me how you looked at one guy. Maybe it's because he's your guy. I get it. Okay? Turns around, comes back with the same talent that you're talking about that you have in your huddle today, plus Barkley. And the Eagles are going like this. Hmm, let's get them a better coordinator. Let's see how that goes. How come Nick couldn't coach him? Nick not good enough? So Nick's not good enough to be his coach and develop him. Nick Sirianni got the job because of his in his intellect as an offensive coordinator. He brings nothing else to Jalen Hurts. He's a liability. To Jalen Hurts. Purdy has a better team. Uh, Crowley says that Purdy has a better team. You mean a better general manager when it comes to player personnel. And John Lynch. That's what you mean. Correct? John Lynch is a better personnel general manager than how he is how he as i'm going to get into this here is 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 a better contract lawyer he's a contract lawyer okay that's what he is Howie Roseman is not a personnel guy. He's a contract lawyer. But where he gets into a problem is, look at the the faces, the two faces of Eve here. Offense has got so much money on it, a lot of talent. Defense has nothing on it. Except spare parts and you're praying Vic Fangio turns it around. Now, let me reset the news of the day, though, and come from the angle There's two separate stories here. 
there's no question. And I said this in the first hour, the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie Roseman, he is the best contract lawyer in the league, especially in cap management. Nobody's better. I don't believe anybody's better than him at it. The way that the contracts are constructed, the way the cap hits don't assassinate the cap, he, he's brilliant at it. I mean, you're really not paying for Devontae Smith for three years. 6'4 this year, 15'5, and he agreed to the option. 26 to 28 is where he gets the three year 75 million. It's a tick under 97 million with an annual of 19.4 over that five year run. It's completely a team friendly deal. And he wanted to be an Eagle. Those are all fabulous things that worked out for the Eagles in this contract. It's fantastic. There's no other. By the way, the Landon Dickerson deal is great. The Mulata deal is great. Even the Sweat deal. Those are all great. Howie Roseman gets massive kudos for being a contract lawyer. But as a GM, and by the way, that's part of it, like Xander said. That's part of it. Indeed. But when it comes to building a team, he lacks in many areas. I'll tell you something, too, that the owner has to get love here. When Howie makes a mistake, the owner will give him a dollar bill as a Band-Aid to go out and cover his mistakes, where most general managers don't get that latitude. You make a mistake, an owner's going to hold you out to dry. You screw up a draft, you screw up a contract. You're fired. Howie, be, this is why Howie keeps his job is, to, is a day like today. It's the only reason he keeps his job. Okay? It's the only reason. John Lynch can't build a Super Bowl winner. Howie built a Super Bowl winner. Um, Howie Roseman did not build that team. Doug Peterson coached that team across the finish line with a backup quarterback, backup left tackle. That was coaching. Coaching won that. Coaching won that Super Bowl. Facts. Total coaching and a D coordinator. All three guys were head coaches in the NFL. At three NFL head coaches on one staff. Okay. I only had a quarterback in Carson playing MVP ball. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's a, it's a crazy constructed deal. And it's, you can't like John McMullen was telling Xander earlier. There's just absolutely no criticism of that deal whatsoever. But I will say this to you. And one more time, AJ Brown, it's only a matter of time before this guy. And rightfully so. He's going to complain about the fact that if that's the market that you have in our team for $25 million for what you think Jalen Hurts has delivered, I'm underpaid. How do you not think that? And if you think that he's going to honor his contract, I don't believe that. He told Tennessee to go pound sand when they came in $6 million shy. You think he's going to sit tight for that? Yeah, well, they're boys. That has nothing to do with it. You're gauged in this league by how much you make and where you are in the hierarchy, especially at that position. Okay? 
How long before A.J. Brown becomes a problem? I think pretty quick. Why wouldn't he? He's already been somewhat of a headache in his little bitchy ways. So look at this. Hold on here. Creed goes, stop it. So wait a minute. You think a guy who's put up over 3,000 yards in receiving and over 20-some-odd touchdowns in two years and over almost 200 catches is just going to sit pat. No, no, no. Matthew. You think that that guy's just going to sit pat? Why would he? Seals, how he has to trade for Sertain. Could be on the table. Dan always wrong. He said you can't keep both. Wait a minute here. Mole, you're not paying. You're not paying that receiver $25 million in, for three more years. Not this year, next year, the year after. Three years from now, you're paying him. He's making 6.4 this year. Makes 15.5 next year. Then he makes 25. There's not two $25 million wide receivers on the team. There's not two $25 million receivers. That's not true. Okay, I'm, I'm move what goalposts? No way the Eagles keep both at 25 million. I know what I said. You're not keeping both at 25 million. Correct. They're not making both 25 million. That's not true. Are, are you talking about moving the goalpost? You're talking about the entire five year contract. That's not how that contract is constructed. They're not paying that money for three years. Can't keep both at $25 million. Correct. Can't keep both. I still hold to that. You're not going to have two $25 million wide receivers on this football team. You're not. You're not. You don't have that right now. The bills are due for three years. Hold on. What do you mean? I, I didn't. No, 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 no. I didn't know that he would accept that fifth-year option and the extension. I've never seen that. You don't have. You will never keep two twenty-five million dollar wide receivers on your football team. End of story. And I still hold to that. He's not making that for two more, three more, two more years. No, he's not. First time for everything? Well, that hasn't happened yet. We won't know that for three more years. Those are facts. I didn't ever change. I never, no, I said you will never have two $25 million wide receivers on your team. End of story. It's not that you can't have two good wide receivers on your team. You're not going to keep 225. Nobody backpedal. I'm not backpedaling nothing. Stick to exactly what I said. Don't worry about it. Your guy will be crying. He won't be around long. How can that guy make more money than me? Or as much money as me? I'm better than him. I put up the... Why is he making the same money I'm making when I do more than him? That's next. How you doing? <laughs> Marcus called it sales. How he is a cap wizard and made the numbers work. He probably got a real good signing bonus too. Um, we're going to see the nuts and bolts, but Marcus, again, he, he made it work because he gave himself time of three years before he had to pay him. 
No way. A.J. Brown will not be on this team Twenty by 20. He may not be on this team at the end of next year. No we. No. No how. I'm not changing anything I said. Okay. Diva Brown. Oh, he's going to go. No. Don't worry. He'll call another radio show bitching and complaining about Devontae Smith getting in targets. Oh, I can't wait to see that little dust up. You just threw more fuel on the fire now. You see Smitty getting targets in a game? Guarantee you're going to see some pouting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to have a little drama on the sidelines over there. You know she's going to get her feelings hurt when the football targets don't start coming his way. No receiver should make big money until they win a Super Bowl. There's been a lot of great receivers in the Hall of Fame that have never won a Super Bowl. No, T.O. and Randy Moss. Hey, hey, Niner all day. You know she's going to start on the sidelines. What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on here? Come on, man. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm the better player. How come he gets it? Don't worry, honey. We'll get you. We'll get you your targets. Don't worry, honey. Then you got Dallas Goddard, too. I wish I was more part of passing offense. Oh, there's going to be such an emphasis now to throw the ball. This is going to play right into this kid's failures. They just accentuated Jalen Hurts. Hey, watch this. I think they just I, I, I think they just elevated Jalen Hurts' departure from this football team by signing that contract because now there's going to be more of an emphasis for the the offensive coordinator to justify the money that they're paying those guys. You think they're going to run RPOs? Give me a break. You, 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 you guys have two receivers that potentially, if you way you want it two $25 million receivers, and you think they're going to go back to RPOs running the ball. Or do you think that offensive coordinator is going to feel pressure to make sure that guy throws the ball 35, 40 times. Mm. Uh, and you know she's definitely going to be crying on the sidelines. It ain't going to ain't cool. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to start that. That's right, MG. You know she's going to start acting up. Okay. You're not sticking to that. No. That's not true. I'm not even debating you, Hammerhead. Go back and listen. Okay? Why you want negativity? You're always wanting bad. Matthew. Okay, Matthew. Are you better today with the Devontae Smith sign than you were when you got crushed by the Bucks? Yes or no? Are you a better team today? Watch this guy. Matthew. Are you a better team today than when the Bucks beat the piss out of you? And you got rid of your best defensive player. Are you better? You're better. Where? Where are you better, Twiz, on defense? Where are you better? Where are you better? Steve, where are you better? Hey, Dan, what is Vegas saying? You had 11 wins last year, and you were destroyed. Coaches? Coaches. You think that Vic Fangio is going to save that pile of shit talent on defense. Great decoys in the offense. Well, what happened the last seven games of that season with the same personnel? Eagles 14 and three. How are you 14 and three, Marcus, when you can't beat the Cardinals? 
You couldn't stop Kyler Murray and Tyrod Taylor. You couldn't stop Tyrod Taylor. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, Vic Fangio, didn't Vic Fangio get the shit pounded out of him by Brian Johnson? Did he not? Brian goes, that was last year. Same personnel. You're lesser on defense, actually. You got rid of your best defensive player. And you added Barkley, which is basically a lateral move from the last two guys you've had. Where are you better? Coaches. No talent. Okay. Case closed. Okay. And Brian Johnson ran circles around Vic Fangio, senior, and the high-powered Dolphin offense. Ran circles around him. Actually, even Sean Desai shut that offense down. Fangio got his ass beat up by Brian Johnson. Desai shut down the Dolphins. Better coaching? Would we not agree the day of the Dolphin game? The Eagles had the better coaches. No, Kyle, the team doesn't stink to high heaven. One side of the ball does. Eagles will have better improvement with Barkley. Dude, wrong side of the ball. When you lose to Drew Locke and Tyrod Taylor at the end of a season when you're fighting for home field, you're not improved. I don't care if you add Justin Jefferson to your offense. That still doesn't stop the defense from bleeding. Everybody today in Philly is so excited about this Devontae Smith signing. You should be. But it has nothing to do with the integrity of the 53-man roster. Zero. You did no improvement today. It's really, hey, Xander said it. This is part of it. Being a contract lawyer. How he has to tag a general manager, he shouldn't. You should have the tag of contract lawyer because that's what he is. I will never reference ever again Howie Roseman as a GM. I'm going to reference him as a contract lawyer. Roseman and Associates is from now on the Eagle front office. Roseman and Associates. <laughs> Hey, what do you what do you rebirth of Devin White? We've only waited five years. Hey, <laughs> Roseman, hey, MG2. Roseman and Associates. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, Xander be getting a call on that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Roseman and Associates. You want a deal done? Watch this. It's like 1-800-GET-A-DEAL-DONE. Or like the Morgan & Morgan things, right? You want a contract done? You want your cap taken care of? Call Roseman and Associates. They'll get it done for you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Holy carb. Hey, hey. Passed his bar down with the Florida Gators. John Morgan passed it down there with um, with the Gators as well. Yeah. Roseman and Associates. Great deal today. Hey, I, I saw Devontae coming out of the offices of Roseman and Associates over at the Novacare Center. Wonderful contract done. Fantastic cap management. Fantastic. There's no question about it. 
No question about it. Really a great law firm. <laughs> we never said we would improve. We signed a player. No, Prince, there's two different stories today. Correct. And, and, and that's a bad thing? No. It's marvelous, actually. But don't pick my defensive players because you can't. Uh, MG, you're you're probably right, dude. Hey, you're probably right. Let that sit for a bit. <laughs> oh, no one person said we improved today, Sills. You love to move the goalpost. No, I didn't move anything because you didn't move anything. Everyone, please say to this dude. He's a negative-ass person and hates the Eagles. No, I want you to do something to fix your defense. Please? Please? <laughs> Pretty please, Matthew? Please? Sign a good player? Please? No Xavier McKinney? No Patrick Queen? None of those guys? Why did you go shopping at the dollar store? Why did you make the same financial commitments that you make? You know this? You know how you know that that side of the ball is being um, ignored? They haven't made one investment in contract extent. When's the last time they extended a contract on defense? In the last three years. They reworked Josh Sweat. They didn't give him more money. So they didn't give him a contract extension. They reworked his contract, actually gave him less money. Bradbury? Gardner Johnson's making less money than he made last year in Detroit. They didn't give him a con. They gave him a one-year deal. Where, where are they investing, restructuring extensions? Where are they doing that with? <laughs> Back up Milton Williams. Wow. No, no. Hey, when's the last linebacker they gave a contract extension to? Actually, that deal they worked with Slay, he made less money base. They gave him more money up front and lowered his base. When's the last linebacker you gave a contract extension to? Seth. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give a contract extension, okay, to – they did Bradbury. They restructured Sweat and Slay. Blankenship. Didn't they re – they gave him an extension. They did. Blankenship. Wait a minute. Reed Blankenship got a contract extension. That's your high mark so far. Thank God for Smitty's deal. Maybe Jordan Hicks. At less money, vet. Than what he was making. He's not making $8 million in Philly. <laughs> hey, you know what, Mole? That would be a pretty good, with, with the eagle emblem on it, Roseman and Associates. Want a deal done? Call Howie. <laughs> yeah, that would be a pretty boss shirt. Okay. Come on, Dan, we're putting a puzzle together with no pieces or some of the pieces missing. Long off season. Dan deserves a raise for talking four hours a day about. Hey, listen, shooter. Again, I thought that John McMullen and Xander did a great job today talking about exactly what went down on the contract. There's no negativity on it. But you want me to sit there and give a guy kudos 
for doing his job at not messing up the wide receiver pick where he gets kudos from me is the template that he put together, which is, I tell you, man, they're very creative and they're ahead of the game. It's very Patriot like how they do these contracts. I mean, and you convince the player to do both. I never in a million years thought that Devante would put 15 to $20 million on the table just to stay in Philly. Cooper Cup did that. He did. I, 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 I just, how they structured the deal is insane great. I think you're going to see a lot of bad defenses around the league. Hey, death row, a great take. Gambling has tilted the NFL more offense and less defense. Death row, getting the hip drop tackle out of there, not spending the money on that side of the ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, that you could be onto something here. You could be onto something here. Sales when the Eagles, Eagle fans are in an accident, call Lori and Roseman. <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to be sending. I don't think they're going to be sending anybody out to see you guys. Okay. Saquon and White are major rebound players. Totally. Okay. Gardner Johnson's a good player. And now signing your best players is a bad thing. Um, Gardner Signing your players is a bad thing. I've never said that. You have no players on defense that are good. Carter, Milton, Sweat. The rest of them? We'll see what Garner Johnson does. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let me take a timeout. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Mike Little was a union construction worker who was badly, badly injured when he suffered a horrific fall because of someone's negligence. His life would change forever. It was just a real downward spiral with everything. Everything you do, and you're sitting home by yourself all day. Have no, you know, you can't go out because you can't drive, you can't walk well. It was just a horrible situation. 
Call Brian Fritz at the Fritz and Beyond Cooley Law Firm at 215-548-2222. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. This dumbass here, Jared 101, shock jocking, failing horribly. Not as bad as your defense and not as bad as your defense did a year ago. Signing the best players, there's nothing wrong with signing your best players, but try signing all of your good players. Like some defensive guys. It'd be nice to sign your own defensive players. You gave contract extensions to two guys that weren't drafted by you. And you're trying to take victory laps on that. How about drafting somebody on defense and investing in that side of the ball? How about that? I mean, how about that? You think that might help? Who's the last guy you drafted you gave a contract extension to with more money? Sweat didn't get more money. I just looked it up. Name me one. And and Rob goes, defensive move is coming. It's got to be a trade then. It surely won't be in the draft because you're not good at it. No one's worth giving an extension to. It's been my point all day. That's exactly correct. Put Senors up there. You said it yourself. No one on defense is worth giving an extension to. There lies my argument. Correct. Thank you, senor. You're right. You're dead on. You're dead on. And it, thank you. Because you don't have any talent there. And you don't draft talent. The Devontae Smith, everything Xander and John talked about is exactly the money, the fifth year option, extending. You don't have to pay the guy for three years. It's brilliant. That doesn't help you win in 24, though. There's no bearing on it. He was on the team the last year when you had that nuclear meltdown. He wasn't a difference maker last year, was he? When he got wiped out by the Bucks, Was he a different maker? difference maker last year? No. That's not a difference maker. Has he been? What game has he won and he's been a difference maker in? Okay. Hey, I know this. I don't know. Sills doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. I know this. You got the shit pounded out of you by Baker Mayfield. And the last three quarterbacks to beat you were Baker Mayfield, Tyrod Taylor, and Kyler Murray. Significantly do with all your great talent. Hey, wake me up when you've addressed the defense. And I know sometimes people get a little upset with me Addressing the reality of it. The contract was nice today. Kudos to Roseman and Associates. But still, you haven't done a whole lot of work on your roster. Now, to someone's point, Sills, maybe, you know, that's the trend of the NFL now. Not a lot of people spending money on defense. You could be right. You could be right. Want to thank Ice Cube for coming aboard. Thought it was dope today for him to pop in with us here and talk a little sports with him. Also, Gary Cobb, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Xander Big Joe, thank you. Two to six tomorrow, and we shall see you on the flip.